You are now tuned in to Vibe Fort Bend Sports, live coverage of Fort Bend High School varsity games. Vibe Fort Bend is your home for boys and girls Fort Bend ISD athletics. It's always free to listen live or listen later on the podcast at vibe.com slash Fort Bend. Now, let's go out to the broadcast booth and the Vibe Fort Bend announcing team for all the action. You're listening to Vibe Fort Bend. Welcome to Legacy Stadium tonight where we're going to be bringing you the High Tower Hurricanes and the Georgetown Eagles. This is Patrick Kinnick along with Kyle Harris. Kyle, welcome aboard and we're looking forward to a great high school game tonight. Hey, yeah, I can't wait, Patrick. You know, this is one of my alumni rivals in the, in the High Tower Hurricanes. I think it's going to be a great game facing up against an opponent in Austin, the Georgetown Eagles. And I can't wait. Another great playoff game in the state of Texas. Houston, uh, the Hurricanes yeah. coming in the game 9-2. And, and the Georgetown Eagles at 6-5. Uh, and five, But don't be fooled. They've had a lot of good competition. It should be a great ball game tonight. And we'll be back with some more information after these short break messages. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And for the first time ever, ask how to get 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. That's more speed and more value for the same price. Oh yeah, and for a limited time, ask how to get $300 back. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now, because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay, and 112121. Restrictions apply. New connect internet, 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes and fees extra, and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. First Star and Automotive heard you were thinking of starting your holiday shopping earlier this year, so the season of giving starts now. $15 off oil changes, $100 off four tires, and save on just about any service. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. First Star and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Here at Legacy Stadium, and there's been an onside kick. The first play of the game is an onside kick by the Georgetown Eagles. And the Hightower Hurricanes get on it. 
That was an interesting play. They had the uh, all the uh, kickoff people all bunched together, and Saucedo, the kick, Saucedo, the kickoff man, squibbed it in there, and Hightower was ready for it. Yeah, so Patrick, that was a that was an interesting play. On first play of the game, an onside kick. You don't really see that very often, but we'll you know Hightower reacted correctly. They got the ball at the halfway point, and we'll see how they can take it from here. Here they are with the ball at about the 48-yard line. Hand off, up the left side. He's got good yardage to the 40, inside the 40 to the 35. And that'll be the runner, uh, Payne, Jeremy Payne, with a great run there. And it's a first down for the Hurricanes. So they get off to a good start with getting the onside kick. And then the first play from scrimmage, they're able to uh, pound out about 17 yards for a first down to the 35-yard line of the Eagles. And we're underway here from Legacy Stadium. Kind of got caught off by uh, cut off guard there by that onside kick. You're expecting the long kick, and all of a sudden you get the onside kick. Here's the fake handoff. It's a reverse. It's to Douglas. He's got a lot of room to the right side of the 40, or excuse me, to the 30. Inside the 25 to the 20. Now inside of the 15-yard line, about the 14. Caleb Douglas came on a reverse. They hand they faked the handoff again to Payne. And then they pitched it to Douglas coming around the right side. And he's able to pick up another first down for the Hurricanes. Two plays and two first downs. Can't ask for much more from that from the Hurricanes as they start off with a bang here. Yeah, great play call by, by Kron Coleman, their offensive coordinator over there for the Hightower Hurricanes. Their way to, you know, change field right there and get upfield. So here they come from the 14-yard line, handoff again. And it's a good fake to the 10. Five. He's looking for the pylon. He's got it with his foot, but does he get his touchdown. The ball in? Yes, it's a touchdown. It's Jeremy Payne again. 14-yard touchdown run from Jeremy Payne. And just like that, the Hurricanes are up 6-0 here pending the extra point. Yeah, what a run right there. And, and really, really that run accelerated Patrick when he hit that hesitation move. When he hit that hesitation and avoided that tackle on the outside he really had enough running room there to just run right into the end zone there and yeah. give these high tower hurricanes a first touchdown he made a great move at about the eight yard line here's ventura for the extra point it is up and it's good the hurricanes lead seven to nothing we've only played about a minute and a half and they're already on the board we'll be back after these brief messages Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members. Here at Legacy Stadium, the kickoff on Ventura is going deep to the Georgetown Eagles, which is mishandled at the 10. He picks it back up. That's Dickman. He's not even going to beat the 15. Oh. He's fumbled the ball, picked oh. up by the Hurricanes. Oh, and wow. they're inside the five. A big break for the Hurricanes as Dickman tried to make something happen around the 14-yard line. And the ball popped out. I didn't see who recovered it for the Hurricanes. He looked like he might score on the play. I got you, Patrick. Good number deal. 88, Caleb Davis, a wide receiver, just picked that ball up after Georgetown Eagles just fumbled the ball. It's, he picks it up, and then he just fumbled it again. I mean, yeah. this Hightower special teams was on that the whole way, and now the Hightower is going to get an easy, hopefully an easy touchdown here on the three-yard line. Right. Wow, what a play. Huge what a opportunity here as uh, Penson brings his team to the line of scrimmage again. Here's Payne behind him. And the handoff to Payne. He's going to easily score on a three-yard run. Nobody touched him. It was a gaping hole, and just like that, within a few seconds, they put another one on the board. It's 13-0 Hightower. 
And we haven't even played two minutes yet. Yeah, wow, that's that's too easy. You know, if you're the Georgetown Eagles, I know it was a long trip over from Austin, but you can't just let Hightower come in. You know, this is kind of like their home stadium. We're not far away from where they play. And to fumble the ball like that on the first kickoff, you know, you, you hate to see that from Georgetown, but Hightower taking great advantage of it right there, Patrick. Yes, that was great to see. Ventura's got the kick up, and it's good. We'll take another break here. 10.34 to play here in the first quarter. 14-0 Hightower. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. Back here at Legacy Stadium where the Hurricanes are coming in like a hurricane. 14-0. Here's a kick from Pinchera. And it's going to be into the end zone as Dickman likes to go over his head that time. He, unfortunately, was the guy who fumbled the last kickoff. And the Georgetown Eagles are going to get their first play from scrimmage. And they've already, uh, they're have already they already trailing 14 nothing. Probably it? probably a good idea that receiver just let that ball go over his <laughs> head yeah. right there, Patrick, yeah. huh? after what happened last time. Yeah, he didn't <laughs> Pretty have, smart there. Yeah, he didn't, want, uh, he didn't have a whole lot of desire to go after that one after the fumble, his last attempt. But uh, there's a long way to go here. The good news for the Georgetown Eagles is there's a lot of time left in this ball game, and they had scored 63 last week. So you know they got some offense. Let's see if the Hurricanes can have some defense here tonight. It's Herman at quarterback. Hand off to the left side, got a big hole. Close to a first down goes uh, Petter. Andrew Petter had a huge hole there, and he uh, was able to pick up nine yards on the play. Yeah, he's second down and one. Yeah, great first down for uh, for these Eagles, Patrick, to get started off first play of the game. Nice nine yard, nine yard run. Gives you a nice little second and short here to, to go from. Here's Darson Herman, the all-purpose quarterback for the Eagles. He's got a lot of yards running, and he's got a lot of yards passing here this year. He's waiting for the snap now. He's back to pass, looking to the left. He's got his man open, and I believe it's caught over there. It is. I believe that's number 25, Garrett Lloyd. Or is it number 26? It's hard to read from this distance here. And I think it was 25. I, I think I heard this a little bit by the PA guy over there. It's heard like it was 25. Yeah, on which, would been, which have been, uh, well, it looks like it's Dominguez. Dominguez. They got two 25s. They got two 26s. They got two 27s on the roster. It makes it a little confusing here. Here's a man in motion. Georgetown has their first first down. Handoff fake. Herman keeps it, and he's going to get about three yards on the play. Got a man going to the left, faked the handoff, and he took it up the right side. And looks like more of a, well, I guess it's about a three-yard gain. Would be second down and seven. A little mini huddle with his um, lineman, and uh, he's ready to go here with a running back behind him. The Moose is behind him. I'll give you his correct pronunciation of his name in a minute here, but they call him the Moose. Herman back to pass. Over the middle, he's got a man wide open. He's at the 20 or 30 Ooh, yard he line. Dropped he dropped it. it. Oh my goodness. He had a man wide open there, about the 28 yard line. Yeah, that's number 14 right there for them, which it's either uh, Hayden During or it's, Mason Gogans. It, you never know who it's, it is. It's so. During. It's During. during. Yes, yeah, the wide receiver. We yep. do have a, uh, we do have a, uh, or at least I do, it's the uh, the list of the starters and the second teamers, so that helps. But it's a different sheet of paper. Yeah, that'll <laughs> that'll help you, Patrick. Yeah, not not me so much. Yeah, sorry, right, but we'll have to we'll figure it out. Here's Herman faking the handoff, keeps it left side, and he's still running to the 50. He's close to a first down. I think he might have had it. Well, I tell you what, he's a big he's a big guy. He's six foot four. I don't know what his weight is, but uh, he's not going to be easy to bring down for the Hurricanes, who lead 14 nothing here in the first quarter. And this is a big test for the Eagles here, uh, getting down early. And for their, for them, they're looking for a good drive here to try to to try to uh, calm things down a little bit here. Herman now he has a man to his left, 
and he takes the snap, handoff, right side, right tackle, and the Hurricanes are filling that gap pretty good that time. And I'm going to get the runner here in a minute. Looks like number 32. Let's see, who's number 32? It's Devin Ross. Devin Ross with his first carry, not overly successful for his first carry of the game. He got one yard on the play. Yeah, Herman in this run game has been really impressive to me so far. Been able to move the ball pretty well here on the ground. So we'll see if they end up letting it loose. I mean, they let it loose once, and the guy just flat out dropped it. So yeah, he, he would have had, uh, well, at least lots of yardage on the play, possibly a touchdown. And he had a lot of space out in front of him there. Here's uh, Herman now. He's going to run it. Left side. He's found a gap there, but he's going to be short of the first down by about close to three yards. Somebody got in on his on his uh, ankles that time and kind of flipped him out of there. And we're going to have a fourth down and a long three here. Oh, it's still third down, I believe. Still well, third it down. says third, but I thought it was fourth. Let's see here. I guess I'm off by one here. Yeah, just a little bit, but you're all good. <laughs> Here's the snap. They're trying to get him to jump offside. They've got some movement in there. Yeah, everything says three, but I, I thought it was fourth, but I guess I'm uh, thinking no. ahead here. Yeah, you think just a little bit ahead. I'm, I'm sure it's on third. Yeah, because there was that short run, and then I guess, well, they got the Hurricanes to jump offside on that play. They sure did. Wow. Three, five yards for the uh, Georgetown Eagles, and that'll be another first down for them. Don't miss the UIL Football State Championships starting Wednesday, December 15th at AT&T Stadium, Arlington. Ticket information and more can be found at UILTexas.org. Here's the first down play, Herman. Quick pass to the left, he breaks the tackle. He's down to the 20, the 15, 10, where he's finally tackled. And I believe, well, I'm gonna get this guy here, number 25, it's Dominguez. Marquise Dominguez, little down and out pass. And he was able to uh, shake the first tackler and tight rope his feet down the sidelines and made a great run inside the 10. Now a handoff. It's the same man who got it a little earlier, Devin Ross, and this got the same result, about one yard. Yeah, they're hearing, going in hurry up offense right here, trying to catch uh, trying to catch these Hurricanes off guard here, but didn't work for that one as it gets maybe a yard or two. But with them being in the red zone there, they've been moving the ball very nicely here through the air. So, Yeah, they've had a couple of solid plays, and then, of course, Herman's been doing some running, which is uh, par for the course as he leads the team in running rushing here for the season. The Eagles coming into game six and five, but the big upset win last week puts them in this game against the Hurricanes, and you can see that they've got some confidence on offense, no doubt about that. Here's Herman. He's going to run it right side, and he's going to be stuffed up in there at about the seven. Good play by the Hurricanes, and it's going to be third and goal now from the seven tough situation for the Eagles. Yeah, that was led by sophomore defensive end Robert Statton there on the uh, on the tackle for the Hurricanes. Great way to bunch up that quarterback before he could really get any yardage going there. Uh, yep. Hightower's, you know, standing firm here. Is this going to be a third and seven to go at the goal line? Let's see what happens here. Here's Ross behind Herman. Now, now he, he directs him to his left. You got two receivers left. Now Ross goes in motion to the right. Herman back to pass. Across the middle, got a man open, and it's incomplete. The flag. But I yeah. did think that that was a pretty good call. Looked like he got tugged a little bit from behind, and the flags went flying. In It's going to be an inter interference penalty right at the goal line. Yeah, he held them. Corner held them pretty much the whole way as he tried to cut through the middle of the field right there. And You know, you just can't hold someone right there in the in the end zone like that. Referee's going to see that every time. And all, the, uh, all eyes were on that one, and... Kyle and I have a real good vantage point. We could see that one uh, from way up here. It was, he was going to be open. You could tell it was going to be a touchdown had he not held him. Now it's first and goal from the one. And Herman has a man coming in motion. It's Dickman. And Herman's just going to take it himself. And he's got it for the touchdown. Looked pretty easy as big uh, quarterback Herman was able to easily score. And that cuts the lead in half. 14-6 pending that extra point. Yeah, and Herman was able to run that ball pretty much the entire drive, Patrick. Started out with a three-yard run, seven-yarder later, five-yarder, one-yarder, and then that two-yard run to end. So he's going to be consistently giving you yards on the ground pretty much the entire game for the Eagles here. 
And good for them to get it, get up on the board now after that terrible turnover to start out their first kickoff of, Here, the, of the game for them. Here's Sauceda with the extra point, and it is good, and that does cut the lead in half. It's 14-7, Hightower will take a short break. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And for the first time ever, ask how to get 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. That's more speed and more value for the same price. Oh yeah, and for a limited time, ask how to get $300 back. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now, because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay, ends 11 21, 21. Restrictions apply. New connect internet 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra, and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Legacy, Georgetown just put up seven on the board to cut that lead in half. We're halfway through the first quarter. It's 14-7 Hurricanes. Here's Sosaida's kick. It's a little pop-up kick that bounces and fielded nicely by the Hurricanes. And he's trying to take it up field. And I'm trying to find the number. Number 30 was able to corral that ball. Kizzy, linebacker, he fielded that on a hop. And was able to take it up field for positive yards. That was a tough play. He made it look easy. And uh, so far, the Eagles have not kicked the ball deep. They apparently uh, have high respect for the return men of the Hurricanes. Yeah, it must be because, I mean, to start off the game with an onside kick and now a little squib kick like he just had right there, it doesn't seem like they want that return man to field it at all, Patrick. You yeah, know, it would, a little it's scared it's, of this. Yeah, the, uh, the risky part then is giving him this great field position that they've had each time. Here's the and off again, who had a good first couple of series is pain, and this time he's not going to get as many yards. He got about two that time. He spun into a, a tackler there. Yeah, Patrick Payne on that first drive, just to go off what you said, his first run was a 17-yard run to start the game off. Then he had another one later, 14 yards for the touchdown. So Payne getting a hefty work, hefty workload. Uh, so far in the game, and then, you know, when they got the turnover, he had a three-yard run in the exactly. end zone as well. He, he was the man. He's got two touchdowns already. Here's Penson handing it off again to Payne. He's found room this time. He's spinning inside wow. the 45, inside the 40. That was a great run. He was able to, first of all, get a good hole, and then once he got through the hole, he made a couple of men miss, and he got all the way down to the 38-yard line. Yeah, great little spin move there. He had a couple of spin moves that he put him in the in the laundry mat right there with some of those spin moves, man. Got all the way up to the all the way up to the 38 yard line of Georgetown here. Hightower pushing pushing the ball on the ground every single play so far this game. And why not if they're not going to stop you? Here's Penson waiting for the snap. This time they're going to throw it to the right side. It's uh, Johnson. Johnson makes a move and he's inside the 30. Well, actually, they're going to mark it around the 32. He must have been pushed out just. Outside the 30 there, he got about a six-yard gain on the play. A quick pass to Caleb Johnson. And he's able to get a solid gain for the Hurricanes. Second down and four as the clock winds to the four-minute mark here of the first, first quarter. It's been entertaining so far. Hightower scored the first two touchdowns, and Georgetown on their first possession is able to get a touchdown themselves. When I say their first possession, they had fumbled the kickoff that Hightower had kicked after they had scored their first touchdown. So the Eagles had not had the ball, and they were already down 14-0. Hightower with three receivers to the right. It's going to be a handoff to Payne again. And he's looking for that first down. He's going to be a little short. Inside the 30, but he's about a yard and a half short first down. So it'll be third down, and we'll call it a yard and a half for the Hurricanes. Do you know who that pass was to play before, It Patrick? was uh, Caleb Johnson. Johnson, thank you, Patrick. Yeah, I appreciate that. and he's the first, has the first reception of the night for the Hurricanes. Just doing some play-by-play -play over here with you, Patrick. Want to make sure I'm keeping up with everything. I understand that. We appreciate it. So here come the Hurricanes with about a yard and a half to go. Penson waiting for the snap. 
Oh, he fumbled it. He fumbled the exchange, and it looks like the Georgetown Eagles may have gotten on it. Yeah, I saw number seven jump on that ball real quick for Georgetown. We're going to see the call here. Yeah, it is. It is. It's number seven coming out there with the ball. Wow, you are right. right there. You are right, Kyle. What a what a what a change of events here as. Uh, Penson had the ball, and it was not a bad snap or anything. He just, as he was making the turn to hand it off, he kind of fumbled it, and then he tried to gather himself again, and he came out of the completely out of his hands, and then there came the uh, the aforementioned number seven. Uh, that's Avila. Jesse make, Avila making yeah. the the big recovery, and uh, all of a sudden we want to mark this point of the game here. 14-7. Hightower was ready to possibly go back up by 14 but here come the Eagles Herman's got it going deep left side his man mm. had his hand on it but then he couldn't quite bring it in as as uh, Henson went to his right or excuse me Herman I'm sorry Herman Darson Herman went to his right and he came back to the left to his receiver and I'm just not quite sure who the receiver was. Yeah, I think he just overthrew him there uh, is what it was. I think the wind might have took the ball just a little bit there. Uh, not a bad play at all, though. He did have an open window there. Quarterback just couldn't get it, find it in there. That was, yeah, um, that was Dominguez who uh, got a mid on it but couldn't quite bring it all the way in. Here's a handoff. Good run. Looks like a first down for uh, M Mossy or, or Mosey. Mosey, the moose. That's uh, Kalen. David Mosey, unless it's number eight. Let's see here. It could be Herman. No, that was not Herman. That had to be Mosey. Yeah, that was. That was definitely Mosey. And, and to the Georgetown broadcast, they told us for the game, everybody out there calls him Moose. So yeah, Moose. Moose getting the, Moose getting the first so down. So we might want to just go with Moose. It's, it's a lot easier to say. Here's uh, the first down play now as the uh, Georgetown Eagles continue their drive. It's a fake handoff. Herman still got it. And he's going to get a first down or very close to a first down. They're marking it a yard beyond the sticks. And Herman, Darson Herman, showing some uh, some of that ability that he has throughout the year. Over 1,000 yards running, rushing the ball for Herman this year. And you can tell with his size, just from looking at him, he can mow his way through a bunch of defensive ends so far in this, in this state. And that's exactly what he's been able to do. He's back to pass now. And he's going down the middle. He's going to overshoot his receiver. That was number 14, uh, Dur Dur Daring. Daring uh, was open again, but uh, that time it was clearly overthrown. Herman just got a little bit too much on that one. It'll be second down and 10. Yeah, a little bit too much mustard for Herman there, but I've, what I've seen from him so far is he really gets his, gets his bread and butter on the ground from those read options that yep. he can see. If he could start getting some of these passes to connect, though, they, they could be scary. You could see that that running game does set up that pass pass attack. Here's Dickman coming in the motion to the right side, handoff to the left side. Still going, and close to a first down is the runner, Petter, Andrew Petter. He kind of weaseled his way through the, the crease there, and then he come off the other side, and he was still running. He picked up about seven yards on the play. It'll be third down and three. Close to four. Well, we'll call it four. It's more of a more like a four-yard situation for the Eagles. It's third and four from about the 37-yard line. Herman waiting for the snap. He's got it. Hand off to the right side. It's going to be a lot of traffic in there. Ball comes out. And who's got it? The Hurricanes have it. He's still going. He might go all the way. He's to the 30, the 20, and he's going to score. That is Payne, Julian Payne, coming up with the scoop and taking it all away. About 45 yards. Well, I'll call that 55 yards on the return once he recovered it. What a great play for the Hurricanes, and the, the turnover so far is the story of this game. Yeah, and that hit that he that they brought him to make that ball fly out, I mean, that ball flew a good 5, 10 yards. They must have really put a, put a nice hit on him. Just like you said, number eight for Hightower picks it up and uh, took it all the way. D. Cameron Burdett. Well, Burrett on well I, I called it Julian Payne. I thought it was number six, but uh, I might have misread the number. But uh, yeah, that, that was Verrett. I just heard on the PA, the number eight Verrett okay. picked up that ball, the defensive back. All right, so, so, <laughs> wow. so the number, I'm still looking at that number. It sure looks like a six to me. Uh, 
He's got the little chain on his head, or on his neck. You know, the, the old tur like turnover six. chain. Uh, it, 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 that yeah. is six. Yeah, no, I like don't know why they said Verdette over yeah, the Yeah, they game. might have misread it too, but the, he sure looks like number six, which would be Julian Payne. Yep. But anyway, here's Ventura. That's going to be, well, the, the snap was mishandled, but then it's going to run it in. <laughs> Will be uh, Caleb Douglas. I don't think that was planned. He just uh, picked up the mishandled snap and then took it to the right side and ends up putting two points on the board. It's 22 to seven with a minute and a half to play here in the first quarter, High Tower leads. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. First Star and Automotive heard you were thinking of starting your holiday shopping earlier this year, so the season of giving starts now. $15 off oil changes, $100 off four tires, and save on just about any service. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. First Star and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Well, it's 22 to seven, the Hurricanes lead. It's been an explosion here in the first quarter. And the kick is gonna come to Dickman at about the 13. Up the middle he goes, and he's uh, pounded down at about the 28 yard line. Let's see where they mark it. Well, it's closer to the 30, it looks like. The, the uh, Eagles have come into the game. They've hit a buzzsaw early. Big turnover early in the game at the, uh, recovered at the three yard line so the Hurricanes were able to score on a three, three yard run and another turnover was a scoop six. Picked the fumble off the ground and ran it all the way in did Julian Payne and so the Eagles have faced heavy adversity here in the first quarter. Let's see what, the, what they're made out of here trying to come back. Here's a hand off to the right side and through the hole he goes. It is Petter again and he's going to fight his way for about seven yards. They have not had much problem moving the ball, Kyle. It's just been a matter of the turnovers. That's it, man. So those turnovers have been killer for both teams, both teams here. So it's not just them. I mean, Hightower fumbled the ball and You're right. thought they were going to have momentum their way, but they turned the ball over right back to him. And Hightower's been taking advantage of it, I can tell you that much. That's so. for sure. And that, that Hightower is just saying, well, see, we would have scored anyway if we hadn't have fumbled that one earlier. That's probably what they're thinking. Second down and three with 40 seconds to play here in the first quarter. Herman fakes the handoff, left side, he goes, he's still fighting, and the pile's still moving. I think he might have the first down after that last little surge. Yeah, line judge stepped over, he was set to the 39, stepped over to the 40 yard line and gave him that first down as he surged forward there as the chains move. It's always interesting, it seems like I've seen it more and more where you get the big pile of guys coming on in and they're able to get a couple extra yards because those linemen are just forging forward. Here's Herman waiting for the snap. They might be waiting for the quarter to end. Let's see, five seconds remaining. He directs a little traffic, has Petter to his right. Now they do get a snap off. Petter has it left side. Good thing they ran to play because he got about seven yards. Well, that's gonna take us to the end of the first quarter. It's been exciting, especially if you're a Hurricane fan. Score at the end of one, Hurricanes 22 and the Eagles of Georgetown 7. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life. Like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And for the first time ever, ask how to get 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. That's more speed and more value for the same price. Oh yeah, and for a limited time, ask how to get $300 back. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now, because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. 
Requires paperless billing and auto pay. Ends 11 21 21. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. With Internet Essentials from Comcast for only $9.95 a month, you get more. High-speed home internet service included. Peace of mind with XFi Advanced Security included. Access to millions of XFi Wi-Fi hotspots. That's included too. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings you affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. We're back here at Legacy Stadium. 22-7, to 7, the Hurricanes of Hightower lead. At this rate, we're going to have a basketball score for a final score. Here's Herman back to pass. Long, he goes. He's got Dickman open. And he overshoots him by about two yards. Holy mackerel. This live presentation of Fort Bend High Tower playoff football is brought to you by Xfinity, the future of awesome. By First Tire and Automotive with four great locations in Fort Bend County for the best prices on tires and everything else your vehicle needs to run at its very best. Visit FirstTireAndAuto.com and by Archer Volkswagen on the Southwest Freeway just inside of Sam Houston Tollway. They've been open since 1956. And here's the play. Downfield they go. Dickman fighting for it. And there might be a penalty. There's no penalty marker. Now here it comes. Here comes the penalty marker. I want to mention that this is being brought to you by Archer Volkswagen on Southwest Freeway. I got interrupted on that. Just inside the Sam Houston Tollway. They've been open since 1956 and they're ready to serve you. You'll feel like family when you're at Archer Volkswagen. And by Needville Insurance Agency, you'll get the very best rate on your car and home insurance when you put the Needville Insurance Agency to work for you. Bradley Stavanaugh and his team shop dozens of carriers so you may pay the lowest premium possible. Call them at 979-793-7411 or go to needvilleinsurance.com and there was a interference call against the Hightower Hurricanes and that gets the ball down to the 38-yard line. And here come the Eagles again. This is going to be a track meet, I think. Here's the handoff. Through the hole he goes on the right side. That's number nine, the Moose, Caleb, Kalen David Moose. Now some of these numbers, if you look at his number from a distance, it looks like number nine. But his number, excuse me, looks like number eight. But it is indeed number nine. Some of these jerseys get a little scrunched up. And sometimes it's hard to tell what you got there. And like Dickman has number six, and sometimes he looks like number eight. When the jersey gets a little scrunched. Man in motion. Herman waiting for the snap. Got Petter to his right. Now he pitches it. Right side. He's going to be close to a first down. He breaks the 30-yard line. He's close to the 28. And I think that's going to be first down yardage. And they are waving the sticks down. Well, this is not the defensive game. If you want a defense, I'm not sure you. this is the game you wanted tonight. This has been all offense so far. Neither team has been able to really stop the other. The only thing that stopped each other is their own turnovers. Three men to the right. Man in motion now coming back to the left. Herman, he's going to pass. Looking down the middle, he's got a man open. It's off his fingertips. And that was Petter. He was open, and I think uh, the only thing, you know, besides the turnovers tonight for the Eagles, uh, Herman's been just a little off on his passing. Yeah, Patrick, I got a perfect stat for you, though, coming at you when it comes to the turnover discrepancy in the score. Believe it or not, Hightower so far, even though they have 22 points, have only converted three first downs compared to oh. the Eagles, have actually converted 10 wow. so far after that last run by Petter. Yeah, you so look even, if the, even yeah. though the first down conspiracy, that doesn't always dictate the game because, like you mentioned, turnovers have really uh, played a part as it looks like Hightower is going to take a, they take, uh, take a timeout. Def here. Defensive timeout, and maybe we take a short break on that at 22 to 7. High tower. 
First Iron Automotive heard you were thinking of starting your holiday shopping earlier this year, so the season of giving starts now. $15 off oil changes, $100 off four tires, and save on just about any service. Head to the website firstironauto.com and claim your savings. First Iron Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firstironauto.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details here at Legacy Stadium. It's first and, well, it's second down and 10 for Georgetown. After that pass was incomplete. Herman has Petter coming in motion now behind him. And they run it to the left for the lead blocker. Herman, 25. And there's a penalty marker coming down in here. And Herman breaks the 20 to about the 19. That looks like it might be one of those holding calls. Yeah, with his size though, man. I mean, Herman just moves through that through that high tower defense. I mean, most of his runs have been been pretty successful on the ground, and I think that read option is the play for the Eagles to to get some more touchdowns. On the ground. You're right, Patrick. It is going to be a holding. On there. Yeah, they call that holding. Um, on well, I don't really know if I should mention his name, Tyler Hawkins. They call it on him. Uh, call him out, Patrick. Well, call him out. you hate know. to. <laughs> <laughs> we you are Fort Ben broadcast. Yeah, you now. hate to have that be the reason why you're calling him out, but. Uh, that is a penalty on him. It'll be uh, second down. It looks like 18. The scoreboard says 17, but the sticks look like 18 to me. It's uh, second down regardless. And here's Herman. He puts his running back to his right. That's Ross. Fake the handoff. Herman, quick pass. Petter. He has his block. He sets it up nicely. Looked like it might have been a little hole down there, but they didn't call it. And Petter takes it all the way inside the 25 to the 24, which brings up a manageable third down and six for the for the Eagles. Yeah, 11 yard run there and, and I like I like Herman when he passes short. He seems like he does a very good job but when, when you start getting more green in there he tends to overshoot a lot of the wide receivers. Yeah, at least that's what's been going on tonight. Yeah, and then maybe he'll settle down a little bit. Herman now has Ross to his right. He's straight back to pass. Now Ross out of the backfield. He's got it. And that's not Ross. I think that's Dickman. Yeah, I believe it. Or is it Moose? That's Moose. That's He's the Moose. It. There's that, those jerseys again all scrunched up. He came right out of the backfield, a little swing pass. And I'm looking at that number. It sure does look like number eight. He, Moose, he just came right out of the backfield. Now they gave us a different number. Well, I don't know. We're going to just do it the best we can here. <laughs> That's Dickman in motion. Inside handoff, and he is just walloped right away. As he ha takes the handoff, he's going to lose about five yards. And uh, did you see who made that tackle? I think it was number 20, uh, Ch Chibuzo. Yeah, That's okay. That. No, that I uh, I kind of just made it. I made it felt like I needed to say that because boy, what a tackle that was. He he was right there. He read the play and wrapped him up with the kind of a good form tackle there. And that'll be uh, bring up a second down and goal now from the 13. This happened last drive. You know, Hightower's defense is, is going to try and bunch them up here in the red zone, but unfortunately they, for them, the Eagles scored on that on that drive, so let's see if they can stop them. You remember they had that uh, interference call that uh, on third down that gave them a, a chance. Here's Herman to the right. Pass to the right. He's got his man open, and he, he's he got it there for a gain of about six yards. Looks like Hawkins on the, on the reception there. Had to go down to the ground to get it. Took it down to the nine. Third and goal from the nine, and here's a question for you, Kyle. If they don't get the touchdown here, will they kick a field goal? I don't think. I don't think so. You I think mean, they're going to go big. Those teams have high-powered offenses, and I think they can score with the best of them. So they're going to want to keep 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 up with the high tower here. Let's see what happens, and they may they may not have to make the decision. Let's see, Herman, with Ross now going in motion to his left. He's got the snap, looking to the right. Herman still looking, now rolling. Still looking, rolling to his left, running, and he's going to be tackled at the nine-yard line. And there's the good play for the High Tower Hurricanes as Guidry got in there and was able to wrap him up. Well, 
I will say this, you know, the Eagles have been able to move the ball very well as, as the field goal unit comes on. So I think we have a pretty good idea they are going to kick the field goal. But they have 11 first down. So it's not like this team has been not able to drive the ball down the field. But yep. when they did get to the red zone last time, Hightower did stop them other than that pass interference. You're exactly you right. I wonder if that call hadn't been, hadn't been called. If it would be a fourth down, they would be in a similar situation. Yeah, and I think the idea that they didn't get any yards on the play had a, an effect on it as well. So Sato, now they're going to fake it. Pass to the left, the man is open, he's at the five! Touchdown, but there is a penalty marker on the field, I think. I see some yellow on the field. Yeah, yeah, I think, and that was before the play called. I don't know if it had been an illegal formation. We're about to hear from the judges now. That's daring. Oh, it's gonna be a touchdown offside on, on Hightower. Oh my goodness, as the, the holder that time was Griffin. He, cop he came up, rolled to his right, and came back with a pass to his left and hit uh, Hayden during during and he was wide open Kyle there was nobody there they basically got fooled on that play absolutely yeah and I, I thought they maybe Hightower gave up because they saw the penalty flag as well but during had all that open space over there you well, know and just what a what a play call from them is they're gonna go for they, two they're, here they're gonna go for two and they got quads to the left now they're gonna call uh, look to the sidelines for the next call Herman waiting for the snap, going for two. It's 22-13. He's going to make a pass to Petter on a little slant, and he was open, and he was able to get into the end zone, and it's a seven-point game. This game is all excitement so far. 22-15, to Hightower and the Georgetown Eagles showing some, some grit here. We'll take a short break. It's 22-15, Hightower. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. First Iron Automotive heard you were thinking of starting your holiday shopping earlier this year, so the season of giving starts now. $15 off oil changes, $100 off four tires, and save on just about any service. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. First Iron Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstIronAuto.com. Back here at Legacy, it's 22 to 15. The Eagles of Georgetown. They're here to to fight all the way to the end. No doubt about that. As the High Tower return man. Mendez is uh, ready to receive the kick from Saucedo. They have a bunched up formation and then now they're here, they're going to onside it again! And is it going to go 10 yards? They're waiting for it to roll and it's not going to go 10 yards. Oh, it'll be a penalty against the uh, Georgetown Eagles. Have you ever seen that? Two times in, in one half. They I don't I've, I've oh, never geez. seen that. They must just be, I don't know if their kicker just can't kick very far. They just must be that scared of this high tower return team to be able to, to give them this great a field position on every possession. I, yeah. you know, I don't think it's going to work well for them unless they think they're going to, that high tower is going to turn the ball over more for yeah. them. And, and cause you just, you put your defense in a really tough position There's here when you're, when you when you're giving them already, they're, they're inside Eagle territory. Right. They're 49. Four, yeah, yeah, so they, when you, when you give them this kind of field position to start out, it's, it's yeah, crazy. They've, they have had excellent field position all all night. Here's Penson. Now the snap, and it uh, looks like it's uh, an illegal motion coming against the hur the Hurricanes. There. Uh, let's see. The first series, they were somewhere around the 45-yard line in their first series. Then they had the ball in the three to start. Remember, they had that fumble, and then they got a kick, uh, uh, a scoop six. But every uh, possession that they've had, yeah, I can tell you has where been. they. Yeah, I can tell you where they started. I got the play-by-play. -play. Here we on go. The 48. And 40. then when they got the ball again, they started on the 47. Yep. And then they scored uh, They scored that, and then they fumbled on that one. Right, so, right. But, but, yeah, so they've gotten – this is their third drive. They've gotten great field position each one. Here's the Penson now to the right. He's got his man open, 45 inside of, of uh, Georgetown territory. That's Caleb Douglas making the catch and doing a little shaking and baking for a nice pickup of about, uh, looks like they got about 13 yards on that. It was first and 15, now it's second and two. 
as the clock winds. Six and a half to play here in the first half. Highly entertaining. 22 to 15, the Hurricanes lead. And Penson. Kendron Penson Jr., the sophomore for the Hurricanes. Who come into the game at 9 and 2 overall, 7 and 1 in their district. He's under center now. Quick pass to the left. Oh, and it was dropped. Was it a lateral? He's still going to run. He's down the left side. He's still going. Now a whistle blows, and let's see here. They're calling it a lateral, which he smartly picked up and kept running. Now the coaches over there at for, uh, Georgetown are having a little uh, disagreement with the whole thing, and I think, I think they're more upset with the players for not coming up on that tackle than they are with the call. I, evidently, there wasn't many, much question about whether it was a lateral or not, but jo uh, Douglas dropped the ball. Looked like an incomplete pass. That's what I saw up here, Patrick. I saw an incomplete pass from that, but if you're saying it's a lateral, you're you're allowed to drop that ball, yep. pick that ball back up exactly the way he did, and he ran it all the way to the 25-yard line. Almost a huge game. It almost looked like it was a – you hate to say it. I mean, I don't think it was planned, but, boy, you, you, get, you get guys stopping on that play because they think it's an incomplete pass. Here's a handoff to to Payne, and that's one of, one of his few uh, not-so-hot running plays. He's been having a – Real good game on the ground here tonight with a couple of touchdowns, but that time they stuffed him for about a yard gain. He's not used to traffic in there tonight. Second and nine for the Hurricanes. And they look to the sidelines like a lot of teams do now. They just get up to the line of scrimmage and they wait for the signals and, and they line up and sometimes they look again and it's the way that things go nowadays. Nobody seems to huddle anymore. Here's Penson, second and nine. Claps it, fake handoff, pass to the left, complete. Left side, inside the 20. And it's going to be a first down. Looks like Kearney got that ball. It's going to be number 16. Yeah, yep. that's uh, Zion Kearney, or Kearney. And it's a first down at the 19. Check that, the 14-yard line. So the Hurricanes trying to answer trying to keep that distance between them and Georgetown. I think the game tonight could come down to, it's already come down to turnovers a little bit here, but it also could come down to which team can stop the others uh, once or twice. Yeah, at this point, it looks like it's going to be coming down to last possession with these both these teams going back and forth. I know Hightower has a seven-point lead, but you know it could, it could be just as simple as that with both these offensive moving the way they are. Here's a hand off up the middle to Payne, and he's... Uh, Felt a little bit of pain there as he got hurt, or he got a hit right away there, and he got about a yard gain. Another one-yard gain for for Payne, but he's he's been putting in his work so far on the ground. Been the workforce for him on the offensive end. You know, they they rarely have passed the balls this game, and when they do, they they actually have been able to to make some completions here and move the ball. But Payne's been the main workforce for him so far. You bet. And then the uh, the pass plays, as you've noticed too, probably is that they've been pretty safe. Pretty safe passes, quick passes, and letting the runners do something with it after the reception. Here's Penson. He's got Payne to his behind him again. Hand off up the middle. Payne's got yardage this time inside the 10 to about the 7. He'll be short of the first down by about 4 yards. <coughs> and here it is. Third down and, well, maybe, well, it's about 4 yards. Close to 5, but the scoreboard does say 4. Third and 4 from about the 7. And could this be one of those opportunities for the for a defense to make a stop here? Yeah, this is big if you're if you're both teams. I mean, if you're Hightower, you want to put up points here after you thought they were going to kick that field goal last possession. They ended up putting a quick quick touchdown on you plus the two point conversion, making it a one possession game, seven points. You know, 22-15 with three minutes and 50 seconds left to go in the in the first half. You know, if you're Hightower now, you, you want to put this ball in the end zone. And and I think if I were them and their coach, and I might take a timeout. Well, here. they're going to do that. Yep, you're you got that right. It's uh, they took a long time, and uh, they ended up calling a timeout. We'll but take a short break. 3:39 to play here in the first half. 22 to 15, Hightower. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. 
we supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot, Office Max. Taking care of business. All right, back here at Legacy Stadium, the High Tower Hurricanes just call the timeout on a third and four from the seven yard line of the Eagles. And um, they want to get it right here. Yeah, like big play. Just, like we just said before before we turn the break there, you know, this is a big play for, for Hightower and Georgetown. I think it gives both the offense and the defense a, a really good time to come together, make sure we got all our ducks in a row here. And, and let's see the play as it's going to be third and short. Let's see what they do. They got Douglas to the right, Johnson to the left, and Payne flanking Penson to his right. They can't off, quick pass, Douglas, end zone! He had his hands on it, but he dropped it. It was a tough play. He got his fingertips on that ball, and it came off, out of bounds, and the Hurricanes are unable to score the touchdown. I think the uh, Eagles are feeling a little bit of a victory there, keeping them out of the end zone. Yeah, and, and the coach is getting, getting in the referee's ear a little bit, wanting to pass interference on that back corner. What do you there. think about that? Do you see it or not? Yeah, it was, I mean, it was, it, it looked like it could go either way, um, but there definitely was a little bit of, uh, there definitely was a little bit of pushing there, uh, but I, don't, I think it was pushing on both sides, so I think that's a good no call. And so Douglas stays in the game to be the holder. Ventura, he's kicked it up there, and it's through. Another points, some more points for the Hurricanes. They lead 25 to 15 now, and I think we'll take a short break. 3.31 to play here in the first half. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot, Office Max. Taking care of business. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenall with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local, hometown, trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Ventura is going to be kicking it off for the high tower Hurricanes. He just kicked a field goal to put him up by 10. And Dickman is going to be receiving the ball at the 10-yard line for the Georgetown Eagles. Up the right side, 20, 25, past the 30, about the 32-yard line. And I have to say that I think Georgetown actually has to feel halfway decent about the first half after the big, big turnovers that gave the Hightower Hurricanes basically 14 points. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if I'm if I'm Georgetown Eagles here, you know, I'm feeling pretty good. I've been able to move the ball very well with 11 converted first downs. You know, we're going to finish the drive, it looks like, before the half. And then and they you the, also get the ball get the at ball the second back. half so they because Hightower started out with This is them. huge. for This is a huge series, actually. Four receivers to the left, one to the right for Herman. And he claps his hands. Quick pass to the left. It's header and he couldn't handle it. It was a little bit low on the pass as Dominguez was trying to block for him. Now if the, as you said Kyle, if, if Georgetown scores here late in the half and then get the ball back at the start of the second half, they could conceivably take the lead in this game. I mean they got to be thinking that here. Of course they got to make a drive here first and the Hurricanes are trying to do something about making sure that doesn't happen. Here's Herman, running to his left, little option. It's gonna be the Moose, no it's not the Moose, it's Petter. Petter to the 35, 45, 50, but there's a penalty marker and that's gonna be a hold. The same man as before, do I dare name him again? Tyler Hawkins, I believe is the guilty party. As uh, Petter, I guess off of that block, was able to find a lot of daylight and he was able to get about 15 yards on the play. Actually, more like 17, 18 yards, and it's going to come back. And that's going to be a tough situation for 
the Eagles now as it's going to be second down and long. And when I say long, I'm going to say it's going to be about 18 yards. Yeah, really hurt yourself there with penalties. As, as you saw Petter get, get pretty good room outside. And, yep. and that was that was because of the hold, though. And so it puts you in a tough situation now, second and long. Now let's flip that scenario. What if the Hurricanes can stop him here and get the ball back? Here's a guy going offside, and he just, <laughs> oh, my goodness, the, the Hurricane defensive man, uh, Chibuzo. <laughs> He, mis he mis miscalculated it, and he was about three yards deep into the backfield, and he just stopped and shook his head and took the penalty, uh, took his lumps there, and it marched five yards for the Georgetown Eagles. That's a little bit of a benefit to them. Makes it second down and 13 rather than 18. Herman waiting for the snap. He's got three receivers to his right, one to his left, and he's back to pass looking to the right. Down the middle he goes! It's going to be almost caught, but broken up nicely by the defender. Looked like Scott, Jaden Scott, was able to dislodge the ball as it got there. Petter had it in his hands, and then here comes Scott, and he was able to make a good hit. Yeah, three guys for Hightower on Petter right there, and, and you just had to get it to him just a little bit quicker there yep. if you're Herman. Um, you took a little bit too long with him being open, and, and the Hightower defense was able to adjust and knock that ball out of his So game. here, that's another play again, Kyle, where it's, it's a longer type pass that has they just have not been able to connect on the longer pass. Now, you're right, a, a second or two sooner, that would have been a big that'd have been a big completion. Third and 13, big play. Here's Herman, back to pass. And he thought about it going deep. Now he's going to run. He's trying to make a move at the 35-yard line, but it was a great tackle, one-on-one. -on -one. It looks like Julian Payne making that tackle, and that's a not an easy play. Open field. He stopped him uh, short of the first down. I may have said the 45. I'm not sure what I said there, but he stopped him at the 36, and then we have a high tower hurricane shaking up there at about the 26, and I have no idea who that is. He's flat on his back. He's moving around a little bit, but... Um, Hopefully he'll be okay. Don't miss the UIL Football State Championship starting Wednesday, December 15th at AT&T Stadium in Arl Arlington. Ticket information and more can be found on at UILTexas.org. He's coming off the field. Is it number 42, Kyle? Can you yeah, read I that number? It. Yep, it's Robert Statton, the junior defensive end. Uh, actually, Robert Sutton, the junior, excuse me, the sophomore defensive end there for the Hurricanes, but he was able to walk off under his own Now, are, they, are the Eagles actually going to go for it here? Fourth and five from their own 36. I would be shocked if they do. Play clock is at 28. Herman directing some traffic. Now he moves his uh, offensive running back to his left. They could be trying to catch him. Well, no, they snapped it. Here's Herman. He's going across the middle. He's got his man open. It's complete. And they're inside of Hightower territory. That's Dominguez. Well, that time he hit him in stride in the clutch. Wow. I'm telling you what, I don't know if I'd have enough guts to go for it. Deep in your own territory. Down seven. Well, actually, they're not by ten, I guess. I thought it was seven here. I forgot about that field goal. But here come the Eagles. Inside high tower territory at the 40 on a big, big fourth and five conversion. Yeah, 23 yard pass right there. Yeah, he hit him at about, well, here's the handoff to Petter. Right side, he squirts his way for about four. Nice little barrel roll. There. Yeah, <laughs> he, yeah, he got tripped up a little and then he, he barrel rolled, as Kyle said, for the last bit of yardage there. They're going to call it about a three yard gain. And uh, Georgetown's really not in. They're not in a hurry right now. They would like to score with as little time as possible here. They still have, looks like they still have three timeouts, so they, they're in good shape time-wise. Field position-wise, they're in really good shape. 36-yard line of the Hurricanes. Minute 30 left on the clock for everybody. Just Herman now directs a, a little bit of traffic. Uh, he's got three receivers to his left. He claps his hand. He's going to run to the right. He's trying to find the edge. He doesn't find the edge, though. He's going to be corralled at the 34-yard line. A good play by the Hurricanes, making a third down and about four and a half yards to go. I will say to the credit of this Hurricane defense, they have allowed 12 first downs for this Eagles, but whenever they need to get a stop when it counts, they've been able to do that as we're going to get a timeout here. 
from Georgetown side. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with you here. One minute left to go in the first half. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, right, copy, you back. and you tune you yep. up. Members get 2% back in reward. Legacy Stadium, third and four. For the Georgetown Eagles, who trail 25-15 here. The minute to play here in the first half. A very entertaining first half. Two receivers to both sides. Herman has it. He's being rushed. Up the white side, he passes it to his receiver, and it's going to be overthrown. Looks like the Moose. Well, is it number six? Dickman, maybe. Well, here we go. We're in another spot. We're in a fourth and short. Now you're inside high towers, you know, high tower zone. Do you go for it? And yeah. it looks like they're going to keep Herman on the field. Yeah. And, you know, with 56 seconds left, why not take a little shot? Trust your defense that high tower is not going to be able to score with that little amount of time and try and get the ball in the end zone. If it's yep. Well, I think that last play was to, to uh, Dickman. He overthrew him. Fourth and four. They've already converted a fourth and five moments ago. Here they go with a man in motion to the left. Herman rolling to his left. Pass, complete, caught, and it's going to be, depending on the spot, I think he's tackled short of the line, uh, line to gain. He's about a half yard short. Dickman made the catch, and I don't know if you saw the man who made the tackle, Kyle. What a play. He was able to sh uh, tackle them short of the of the first down marker. Wow. Want to mark that down as a big play. Boy, oh boy. Georgetown, if they score here at the end of the half, it's uh, going to be white knuckler time. Now the Hurricanes have stopped them, and they still have 45 seconds. So I would imagine they would at least see what they could do here. I don't know if they'll be uh, overly aggressive here, but if they get a good positive first play, they might. I think you got to be here. I think you got to be knowing you're not going to get the ball at the second half. Why not take a shot down the field to maybe at least get a field goal? That's a good point. What Penson hands it off to Payne. He's bounds a crease up the middle. He's oh still nice. going. He's in the 45, 50, 30, 25. Is he going to be caught? He's going to be caught at about the 10. Well, how about that? Wow, what a change of events there as Georgetown was trying to to go in for the uh, the score that would tighten the. The screws a little bit here. They got stopped on four down, and then the big play to Payne. Well, they didn't really make a, it was not a risky play. It was right up the middle. And he was able to find a huge hole. 59-yard gain on that one for Payne. Thanks for adding that up for me. 59 yards all the way to the, well, it looks like the 10-yard line. And they're in business now, the Hurricanes. Yeah, Payne behind him. They got out of bounds. Clock stopping. They're taking their time to call this play. Yeah, I you forgot know? about that. The, the clock stopped on the out of bounds situation. Payne up the middle, and this time he's clocked at about the nine yard line. And let's see, are they going to call timeout right now? Oh, they yeah. are. That'll be their last timeout. But uh, wow, things have really changed. Looked like uh, the momentum was on the uh, Eagle side. They were driving down a field, looking to try to score some points. Hey, all it takes is one 59-yard run, <laughs> yeah. and, the, and the game can just turn over for you like that. That's what Payne's been able to do yeah, all he, game. Yeah, he's had an excellent first half. He's over 100 yards, I believe. He's close to it, at least. Yeah, uh, I'll do the math for the halftime. Yeah. So stay tuned for coming up uh, yeah. on halftime. You know, we're going to have a gr some great interviews uh, that our boss has got for us, as well as I'm going to have a little first-half recap coming back and before this third quarter. But we will go ahead and take a little ad break right here. We'll be back in 30 seconds. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. 
Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. And we're back at uh, Legacy Stadium where the High Tower Hurricanes are poised to score some more points. They're inside the 10, eight yard line. Fake handoff, reverse, coming this way. He's, he's open at the five. He's gonna get all the way in there. Looks like Johnson, Caleb Johnson scoring. They look like they're gonna go to the, to the left. Caleb Johnson came back to the right on a little flip from Penson, and he had a lot of green out there. Good block downfield. Got into the end zone, and boy, things have really changed. It's 31 to 15. Wow. Just like that, they got in the end zone right there in about 40 seconds, yep. if that. Patrick, that, yeah. was pretty, that was pretty remarkable I for, like what, for a high tower. I right like there. what you said about how a 59-yard run will, will definitely change your, hey, your thought process. Here's the snap a little low, but uh, Douglas was able to scoop it up. and uh, Yeah, that was very impressive on that because that was not a good snap. No. For him to be able to get that ball and, and set it real quick because it looked like it was going to have to run out for another two-point conversion yep. like they did earlier in and the he, game. He got it down, and then uh, Ventura was able to get it through. Um, boy, I tell you, this, <laughs> this has been a great first half, and the Hurricanes have to be feeling good now, a lot better than they did just moments ago when it looked like the – Georgetown Eagles might be uh, going on in for a score to cut the lead to possibly three. All of a sudden, now it's a 17-point game, and the Hurricanes have that nice lead. Yeah, we're going to stay with it here. And you know, I made that I made that call earlier about the amount of first downs that the uh, that the Eagles were able to get 12 yeah, in the yeah. first half, and only six for the Hurricanes. Right. But you know what? I didn't take into account <laughs> the <laughs> fact that they're starting at midfield. Right. So the fact that they don't have to convert that many first downs exactly. when you're giving them that single th every time. And, and you turn the ball over, and, and they're in your territory on the 30, and they're able to just hand it off to Payne, and he's able right. to take it all the way, you know, almost all the way in for you. And so not, to, not to mention the fact that they've had a couple of big, you know, big runs, you know, so you could get a first down, and you have a, you know, a lot of yards to it. Obviously, that 59-yarder, you don't need to get too many more first downs if you get 59 yards on one play. Ventura yeah, has it teed up. There's 21 seconds to play here in the half. And he's going to boot it deep. Which we don't see the Eagles do. <laughs> yeah, Dickman has it at the three. He's out to the 25. He's going to reach, well, about the 26-yard line. Good tackle. Great tackle. By the uh, Hurricane defender there. Yeah, number 41, Quentin Pearson on that tackle. And I... I've just been really impressed. I know that they that these Georgetown Eagles have been able to convert a lot of first downs, but this defense, man, when they need to hold solid, they've been able to hold solid and, and stop these these Eagles. Other than that one fake field goal play that caught them a little bit off guard, yep. other than that, the Hurricanes have been very stable, in my opinion, on both defense and special teams well, so they're far making in this them, game. They're making them earn it, and they're not getting, giving them the big, big play. It looks like the uh, Eagles are just going to down it here, and they are. Yeah, good they're going to – Get out of here with a 32 to 15 deficit with a good first half for the Hurricanes as the clock winds down. It's going to be halftime here from Legacy Stadium. It's been an exciting first half, especially if you're a Hurricane fan. The score at halftime, Hightower 32, Georgetown 15. Welcome back to VibeFordBend.com. Halftime of our playoff coverage and our halftime score is? It's going to be 32, Hightower Hurricanes, 15, Georgetown And Eagles. we have a great guest this halftime. We came a long way to talk to him, but I think it was worth it. And you're not going to know his name, but maybe someday soon you will. Well, he's Brett Tanner. He's the head basketball coach of the men's program at Abilene Christian. And now you're saying, oh yeah, Abilene Christian, they knocked Texas out in the first round of March Madness. And first of all, congratulations to you as the new head coach of the men's program here. Thank you, I appreciate it. It's been great. All right, so the guy under whom you served as an assistant, Joe Golding, elevated you to associate head coach uh, during his last couple of seasons here at ACU. And of course, he's the architect of the upset victory that made the world tremor. It was amazing. I was very proud. ACU knocks out Texas. And Joe Golding, not too long after that, gets a, a promotion to UTEP. So he's taking over the minor program. And I understand that you did not waste any time letting the ACU administration know that you wanted the job. No, I didn't. Uh, it, it took about uh, two seconds for him to walk out the door. I walked back in the door and said this is where I wanted to be. 
and uh, started the process of hopefully you know trying to get the job. Well, you're a great defensive specialist, and we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail in a moment. But there was a lot more to ACU's great season than just beating Texas in the first round of March Madness. I believe the the overall record when it was all said and done was 24 and five. I'm correct about that. Correct. Yes. And really, what made the difference was an amazing suffocating defense. You forced 19.93 turnovers a game. That led the nation in your turnover margin. 6.3 more takeaways than the giveaways by ACU. You were second in steals as a team, fifth in scoring defense. What is your secret? Good players. <laughs> so I think players are, are, you know, you have to have players that are willing to listen and, uh, and be coachable. And that's, we have a great group of kids. Uh, we're excited because we have a lot of those guys back. But uh, yeah, I've, I've coached defensive teams that weren't as good. Uh, but the, the last couple of years, we've had really good players, and that helps. Well, one thing that I'm kind of disappointed about, it's not, nothing I could do anything about, but all these years ACU has been playing in the Southland Conference, playing their conference tournaments in Katy at the Merrill Center. And I've always been busy calling high school sports at the time and didn't get a chance to watch them. But you're not going to be coming back to Katy anymore as the Wildcats are now a member of the WAC. Tell us about what that's going to be like um, moving up a little bit in the world. Yeah, it's, it's going to be different. Um, you know, for me personally, I've been in the Southland for 16 years. You know, I was at Stephen F. Austin for, for a while and then here. Uh, so I knew all the back doors, all the good places to eat, uh, you know, all the bad places to eat. I knew everything, and now it's, uh, it's a new challenge. I don't know anything about some of these guys. And, uh, but it's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be new, uh, a new challenge, an exciting challenge. Um, but we're fired up about it. It's, it's going to be different. And we won't be in Katy, but we're going to be in Vegas now. So that's going to be a fun change. Yeah, well, I, I don't know how excited the Vegas people will be for Abilene Christian fans because they might uh, come in with a $50 bill in one pocket and a copy of the Ten Commandments in the other, and they may break neither during their time in Vegas, but I'm sure they'll kick some butt in basketball. There's no doubt, man. We're, we're going to be there to play basketball, not gamble, but uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see if there, any of our fans will slide off. The confidence level is at an all-time high for ACU basketball. We'll come back and talk more with their new head coach, Brett Tanner. And we're going to play the basketball version of Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. And we're also going to let you know that his dad is the cousin of a woman who played the sister of someone who got killed in the shower in a famous movie. So don't go away. This is VipeFortBend.com. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And for the first time ever, ask how to get 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. That's more speed and more value for the same price. Oh yeah, and for a limited time, ask how to get $300 back. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now, because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay, ends 11 21, 21. Restrictions apply. New connect internet, 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes and fees extra, and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Welcome back to our playoff halftime show on VibeFortBend.com and we continue in our visit with Brett Tanner who is the new head basketball coach at Abilene Christian. First of all, this is not your first head coaching position but it is your first in Division One, correct? What's your, your uh, trail that brought you to ACU as the head coach? Yeah, sure. So I started as an assistant coach at Fort Scott Community College and uh, I think I made 2500 bucks, and that was it. And so I had to mow a lot of yards and substitute teach to make ends meet, but I was an assistant there uh, for a guy by the name of Phil Cook and then Chris Beard, who a lot of people know. Um, who is now the head coach of Texas. And, and when Chris left, I was able to get the job there. Uh, I was 24 years old, thought I had all the answers, didn't have any answers, but uh, it was an unbelievable experience for a young guy. Um, kind of figured my way out, made every mistake you could make. Um, and then I was fortunate enough where, where Coach Beard was at Texas Tech with Coach Knight. 
Um, there was a junior college right outside of Lubbock in Leveland, Texas called South Plains College. Um, he convinced me to go there to, to leave a head coaching position to be an assistant coach, but I think I got like a, a, a big pay raise, like a $30,000 pay raise to go be an assistant. So <laughs> if that tells you the difference between the two jobs. Um, and so I was there. I worked for a legend, man. He's already in the Junior College Hall of Fame, won three national titles, and Steve Green uh, at South Plains College. And then from there I went to Stephen F. Austin uh, and, and worked for Danny Casper uh, for seven years. Uh, and then Joe talked to me, he convinced me, when, when Coach Casper went to Texas State, Joe convinced me to come here instead of go with him. Uh, it was the best decision I ever made. So give me 30 seconds on Bob Knight. You weren't there on his staff for very long, but uh, what was the best Bob Knight story that happened while you were there on his staff? Well, uh, there's a lot of them, man. Some of them I can't talk about, but, but he, was, uh, he was good. We, we practiced in the mornings, and so we were able to drive over to Lubbock every day and watch them practice in the afternoon. So I was over there all the time, and Coach Knight was gracious enough to, to let us sit in on staff meetings and, and be a part of, you know, just sit back in a corner quietly uh, and, and see some things. But the, the best story that I can tell about Coach Knight is I have a friend who's the head coach at Sol Ross. His name is Cliff Carroll, and uh, he was a manager on Coach, you know, coach Knight's staff at the time. And... Um, you know, Cliff needed to, he needed to get in shape, and he needed a little exercise, so he walked over to the scores table where we were sitting, and he said, hey, watch this, you know, and he ran over, he said, hey, we called him Bear, you know, he said, hey, Bear, come here, and he said, hey, I forgot to get, I forgot a pen when you run up to my office and uh, go get, go get a pen, you know, and so Bear runs up the stairs of the arena, uh, goes and gets the office, gets a pen, comes all the way back down, he's sweating, and he hands it to Coach Knight, and it's a black pen, and in Coach Knight's words, I can't use them. And he's, you know, you know, dang it, Bear, I didn't ask for a black pen. I asked for a blue pen. Go get me a blue pen. So he goes up and he, he runs upstairs again. He goes and gets a blue pen. And he comes back down. He's sweating even more. And he hands it to Coach Knight. And again, in Coach Knight language, he says, you know, dang it, Bear, I didn't ask for a blue pen. You know, I, I, I wanted a black pen. And so, you know, you can't, you don't talk back to Coach Knight. So Bear runs back upstairs and he comes back with one of those pens that you can click like four different colors has red green blue black so you know he thinks he's got it now and he comes back down and he gives that pen to coach knight and coach knight looks at it and he says what am i supposed to do with that i don't even know how to work that and so he sends him back up and down for i don't know six or seven trips and then finally you know bear kind of looks at him and says man coach do you really need a pen and he said no you know get back to work i just, I just figured you need a little exercise so uh, that was a good entertainment that was the kind of stuff coach knight did quite a bit of man um he gets a bad rap man he actually had a really great sense of humor well, you, you had so many great legendary mentors, but let's, it's not quite the six degrees, but Coach Beard was on Coach Knight's staff with you, and Coach Beard has turned out to be one of your greatest mentors. He now has jumped from Texas Tech to UT because, well, Shaka Smart lost his job after ACU knocked them, knocked them out in the first round. But do you know that Terry Priest, who was an assistant athletic director in Fort Bend County. Uh, before that, he was the McCullough slash Woodlands Highlanders head coach for about the first 20 years of the program. Well, Coach Beard says that Coach Priest was really his first really significant mentor because he played for him for the Highlanders. And so Terry Priest went to ACU, he was on the staff of Fort Bend Independent School District, and he is the reason that the Ridgepoint Panthers, the newest of the 11 schools in Fort Bend ISD, have the primary color of purple. So that's a proud thing. Terry was a great guy. I'm, I'm proud to have known him. Uh, unfortunately, Coach Priest passed away in 2020, and I miss him very much. But one other thing, to lighten it up one more time, your dad's cousin is an actress, Vera Miles. So. Tell us what she's famous for, or at least one thing that she's famous for, and it has to do with Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, she was in uh, Psycho. I think Psycho 1 and 2. Uh, but her sister died in the shower scene, I think, is what it was. Right. right. Uh, Vera Miles played Lila. She was the one whose sister uh, foolishly was traveling, traveling alone and stopped at the Bates Motel. That's right. That's right. And so, uh, so we talk about that quite a bit in, in our household, but uh, Vera Miles, that's, that's kind of the claim to the Tanner family, is, 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 is Vera Miles. And I know it was a long time ago that Psycho 2 came out. I, I guess it was maybe 21 years after the original Psycho. Vera Miles, one of those beautiful ladies. It doesn't matter how old she gets. She's still beautiful, but you never got to meet her, did you? I never did get to meet her, but I got, I got to see some of her movies. I got to see her on Love Boat all the time and, and got reminded that that was, that was her cousin, or his cousin every time she was on television. You're so. too, too young to remember yeah. Love Boat when it was 
in production. You watch reruns, I right? Watch reruns, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love the reruns of Love Boat, though. All right, Brett Tanner, wow, we've covered a lot of ground in a short time. Thanks for being with us. Congratulations on being the new head coach at Abilene Christian. Uh, be careful what you wish for because you're going to get high expectations. Well, if you can beat Texas last year, we see no reason why you can't knock somebody off who's a way higher seed than you in uh, the coming March Madness. I'm sure you're ready for that. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, the expectations are through the roof. Uh, but I did say in my press conference that, uh, I mean, if, if we hadn't beat Texas, then I wouldn't be sitting here as the head coach. And so I can't be afraid of those expectations that were created. Uh, we're going to attack and we're not going to run from them. But uh, I'm excited, man. I love ACU. I love being here. And I'm excited to be the head coach. All right, we'll continue with our playoff coverage. This is VibeFortBend.com. Thanks so much, Brett Tanner, and good luck in this coming season for ACU. First Star and Automotive heard you were thinking of starting your holiday shopping earlier this year, so the season of giving starts now. $15 off oil changes, $100 off four tires, and save on just about any service. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. First Star and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Welcome to halftime on VikeFortBend.com, and our score is... Hightower 13, Georgetown 15. We're very honored to be joined by a guy who is very impactful on the lives of many teenagers throughout Fort Bend ISD and schools all over Greater Houston. Todd Dillingham, who along with his brother Taylor, co-owns the Houston Balfour franchise. Welcome in, Todd, and how are you feeling today? Thank or tonight, you. rather. Thank you, Roger. Everything's great, man. Just happy to be here and happy to be able to support my Fort Bend and uh, Lamar Consolidated Schools. Now, we've got uh, all 11 schools out of Fort Bend and also Foster in Lamar Consolidated as well as Fulcher and scores, literally scores of other high schools around the greater Houston area who count on Balfour to supply them with class rings and championship rings if they need one letter jackets and they have trophies and plaques and displays of all kinds and when people graduate they are a well-known supplier and distributor of graduation products and accessories so talk about the history of you and your brother with Balfour here locally yeah Roger uh, my brother Taylor and I have been in the business it's a family business my father was in the business for 42 years uh, I'm in my 21st year my brother's in his 17th year and we've been serving the Houston area for a long, long time. Uh, Balfour is about a 100-year-old company. Uh, we source the best products across the country, uh, make sure we get these kids the best things they can uh, to commemorate the, the things that they've earned throughout their high school career. And we just want to be able to you know, be a part of these schools and uh, make sure the kids have everything they need uh, to be successful uh, and to you know, create memories for years to come. So I think back to when I was in high school and that's hard to do. It was so very long ago, and long ago for you, but not as long as it is for me. We really treasured these things, um, the rings, the letter jackets, and you know any trophies that we earned and things like that. Is there anything about the digital age that makes it a little bit tougher sell for the kids? I'm sure it's not a tough sell for the parents and grandparents, but how about for the kids? Do the kids really value these things as much as uh, the older folks in their families do? Interesting question, Roger. You know, uh, throughout the years, things have changed. Um, you know, today, class rings are something that's kind of an older tradition. Uh, students love the letter jackets. Uh, people earn them. They earn it for anywhere from not only sports, but for academics, for clubs they're involved in. Uh, graduation is going to be always important forever. Um, with graduation, um, you know, we have different types of graduation announcements now that are digital. Uh, we have QR codes where kids can actually upload pictures for graduation and put them in their graduation announcements. Uh, so we have lots of different things that have to try to stay up to the, to the ages of where these kids are and where they are Technolog technologically, um, we want to stay savvy there. Um, but then on top of all that stuff, you know, the one thing that we still are very relevant in is championship rings. We've had lots of schools in Fort Bend uh, win different types of state championships. We've done track rings for Marshall. We've done soccer rings for Clements. I've done basketball rings for Bush. I've uh, done basketball rings for Travis. Uh, we've done lots of different types of championship rings and hopefully to do quite a few more in the years to come in Fort Bend ISD and Lamar Consolidated. 
Todd Dillingham of Balfour, I'm really impressed. You didn't miss a beat on all of our, our crowning achievements, really, basically, during this century for teams out of Fort Bend ISD. We're going to take a break and be back on Halftime. VipeFortBend.com. Todd Dillingham of Balfour is our guest. We'll be right back. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vipe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. Welcome back to Halftime on VipeFortBend.com. We are your broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports and our halftime guest, or one of them tonight, is Todd Dillingham of Balfour. And when we think about things like Balfour's, uh, what they make, their class rings and championship rings, letter jackets, trophies, plaques, and all kinds of displays, as well as graduation products and accessories, their mementos. Uh, sometimes I think we maybe we we save them forever sometimes a few of these things might get lost uh, like the, the graduation cap and gown I guess you never really need that for anything other than a costume party but uh, let's go back let's go back in the way back machine for Todd Dillingham as a teenager and an athlete at Stratford High School tell us about some of your experiences as a student athlete at Stratford you know, at Stratford High School, uh, you know, I was involved in quite a few different teams. I played on the baseball team, played on the football team. Um, you know, some of the best years of my life. Uh, I still treasure those moments and wish I could always go back. Um, you know, but at that same time, the one thing I do have, I still have my letter jacket. I still have my patches from football. I still have my patches from baseball. And it helps me go back and commemorate the different things that I was able to achieve in high school. And uh, just, you know, those are the golden years of your life. Enjoy it while you can. And um, it's... High school high school's the best. It's nice to be in a job where I can help commemorate those d different things for these students for years to come. So what was your class year, if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> uh, Roger, it was class of 1997 at Stratford High School. Any brushes with greatness? Did any of your classmates and or teammates go on to something uh, famous and wonderful where we can, you can brag about knowing someone? Funny you ask that. Uh, I believe my grade at Stratford High School is probably the worst athletic grade ever to come through the school. Uh, Stratford High School, though, on a different note, is the home of Andrew Luck. So uh, that's about the biggest claim to fame Stratford has. Uh, had some good teams in the early seven or the late late 70s and late 80s, but besides that, you know, we're just uh, just fighting like everyone else is to get a few wins on the board. And you know something else, something that my family and I discovered on YouTube one summer. The Stratford band and the entire student body did this one take video. I don't know if you're familiar with it. I don't know when it was done, maybe around 2004, 2005, somewhere in there. It was just amazing. They had lip sync of recorded music. It was awesome. Are you familiar with what I'm talking about? You know, Roger, I'm not. I have seen some schools in Fort Bend ISD do that. Ridgepoint did something like that. Uh, we've had, I think, Dallas High School did something like that. But that's pretty cool. And, and uh, you know, again, it's back to why high school is the best. You can always get the best memories and always create the best things in high school. And another thing about Stratford, 1978, they had an undefeated state championship football team featuring Craig James, who is in the Texas High School uh, Football Hall of Fame. We did an interview earlier this year with Mike Anderson, who's the president of that outfit. And I don't know if you know this as a Stratford grad. Way back when the 1978 seniors on the 78 football team, you know, they were class of 79, back when they were freshmen, they had T-shirts made to go under their shoulder pads that said 15-0 in 1978. Three years before they would complete that mission. They truly went 15-0 in 1978, beat Plano in the Astrodome to capture the 
state championship. I'll never forget that team. So I don't suppose there have been any alumni mixers where you've run into Craig James? <laughs> no, sir. He's a, little, he's a little bit before my time, but uh, I'd love to meet the man, and he is, he is a legend in his own mind. So it's uh, Stratford High School, you know, class of 1997. We're still waiting for a legend, but, uh, you know, maybe someday somebody will make something of themselves. And at the risk of uh, people thinking the announcer of the football games is an old geezer, I like to tell history lessons. So many school districts around Houston used to have one high school and have ballooned and grown and they have multiple high schools, but Spring Branch is kind of an anomaly. Back when I was, I don't know, maybe 10 years old, Conroe started playing against the Spring Branch schools. And there were more Spring Branch schools then than there are now because you had a school called, um, you had Spring Branch High School and you had Westchester. Those two have closed, but you still have Memorial, Stratford, Northbrook, and who am I leaving out? Spring Woods, Spring Woods. So um, Spring Branch is an interesting place. And I was wondering, do you, do you still make your home there? I do, I do, Roger. Actually, it's funny you ask. Uh, my parents both taught at Spring Branch High School. That's actually how they met. Uh, but yes, this is home. It's been home for my parents. It's been home for my brother. Uh, we all live in Spring Branch ISD. Our office is in Spring Branch ISD. Uh, so this has been home for, for as long as I have been around on this earth. Well, we really appreciate you being our guest. That's Todd Dillingham, the co-owner of Balfour in Houston. Now, I realize that you have deals with all the schools so you make sure any student who wants something can get something but let's say there's a student who for whatever reason might want to just kind of go their own way in ordering from you can you can they get products from you and if so how can they do that 100 percent roger always we can always use balfour.com balfour.com is a great site you can actually go on design class rings you can look at championship rings if you want a championship through a one-off you know, any type of event or anything like that, you can always contact us. Uh, graduation products are available online. Uh, you can always come to our office as well. Again, we're located in Spring Branch. I uh, always swing down to our office. We're open five days a week. We have nice customer service here, bilingual customer service to help anybody out that needs help with any type of graduation goods, uh, supplies, or accessories. Well, thank you so much for what you do because you love to look back on a very happy youth and some of the greatest memories you ever had, some of the best friends that you have ever had. You keep those friends for a lifetime. And these things that help us remind us of those good times, th those are great to have. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Roger. I appreciate the time. And uh, let us know if you guys ever need anything from Balfour. We will continue with halftime on VibeFortBend.com. Don't go away. We are at halftime here. It's at Legacy Stadium, and it's 32 to 15 high tower on top. And Kyle has been diligently working on the stats. What do you got for us, Kyle? Yeah, I got a little bit of stats here. I don't have everything here, Patrick, but I, but I got enough needed. So pretty much the MVP so far for the game, in my opinion, has been high towers, running back number 20, um, number 26 which was Jeremy Payne. He was 11. He had 11 carries for 119 yards in that first half, two touchdowns, and one of those runs being that 59-yard 59 59-yard run that we called. Uh, also, to go ahead with Hightower, the quarterback, Penson Jr., has four for five. Very, very consistent, very great completions, 80% completions on 47 yards, and he did have that one fumble. That's the only knock on Hightower so far as they're up 32-15. And on the other side with Georgetown Eagles, we have – Petter, their number one running back, six carries for 45 yards. And then Herman, their quarterback, has also been their de facto running back because he has 10 carries for 36 yards and a touchdown, and he's seven for 15 for his completions. Well, there you got it. Some, uh, some interesting statistics. And one of the things that we did not mention that <coughs> we'll throw in there, there were some turnovers, and they were big in the first half. P Hightower was able to get 14 points off those turnovers, including a scoop six. Uh, fumble recovery. Dickman gets the kick from Ventura. Here he comes. He's for Georgetown to the 30, 35, 40. Still running, and he's about the 41-yard line before he's finally tackled down in there by, looks like, number 21, uh, Devon, uh, Devon Miller. And 
great mention there, Patrick, on that on that fumble recovery. I did forget to throw in. I wanted to throw in number six, Julian Payne for Hightower. Had a huge 55-yard fumble recovery yep. for a touchdown right that, there in that yep, first that half. That was the scoop Big six. Julian Payne. Yep. And that the was... Paynes are taking advantage of here. Got, yeah. got six, Julian Payne, then got 26, the running back, Jeremy Payne. Could They're, be brothers. Oh, I believe they might be. Um, the, the story of the game is those big plays. It's a 17-point lead for the Hurricanes. Here's a handoff to Ross. That's his, the best run from him tonight so far. He's only had a couple of carries, and the carries he had in the first half, I remember he was stonewalled at the line of scrimmage. That time he was able to pick up eight yards and a little uh, momentum uh, shouting and cheering from the sideline <coughs> of the Georgetown Eagles. Their sideline is active over there. Here's a guy who jumps offside for the Hurricanes, forcing one of the linemen to jump. It should be offside. Hurricanes, let's see what they're going to do here. Yep. Just like you heard, offside's defense. And Looks like it was Bradford who jumped off, and then he forced one of the linemen for the Eagles to move, and that is <coughs> always a defensive penalty when that happens. First down, Eagles. Starting the second half, down by 17. And they need a score quickly here to uh, turn the tide. Here's a pump fake down the sideline. He goes. He's got his man open. It was Ooh. caught and then oh, wow. dropped and intercepted. What a big play. That's Bradford on the interception. Not sure what he's doing way down there. But he trailed the play. And he made the interception. It was caught. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the number who had that ball. It looked like it might have been Dominguez. He had it. Then it was knocked out of his hand or he mishandled it. Popped up in the air. And there came Cameron Bradford down to intercept it. Yeah, wow. It was he, number 25 right there. Uh, that's Dominguez. For Georgetown. Dominguez, yep. he had the ball in his possession. Yep. And then it, he just fumbled the bag. It just flew out of his hand. I'm not sure if a guy got a – the defender might have got a – a hand on it to knock it up there, but it just popped out of there. And yeah. to the uh, to the credit of uh, Bradford, senior linebacker Bradford, right there, really great awareness to pick up that ball and take it to the 25-yard line for Hightower. Here's the pass to the left to the right side. Douglas has it, and he's going to pick up. Well, no, he's not going to pick up anything. He's going to get to the line of scrimmage. Quick pass to Caleb Douglas from um, quarterback uh, Penson, but nothing doing there. Boy, oh boy, the Eagles have been uh, snake bitten tonight. That that uh, that's tough because I will say this. You know, we, we were getting on Herman about not being able to, to to get good passes in. I mean, he put that pass right in the basket yeah, for Dominguez sh there. Sure Dominguez did. just he just fumbled the bag. He just let it fly right out of his hand. And yeah. Bradford was right there. And now Hightower, you're giving them all the momentum in the world now because they're already up 17. Now you just handed them the ball back. Yeah, if they can get a score here. It's going to really make it hard. Here's a handoff to Payne. It looked a little strange, like there might have been a snap was delayed or something. Yeah, maybe a little bit of miscommunication there for Payne. He was able to get back to the line of scrimmage. It is going to be a, a third and long, but, hey, I mean, just the fact that they're running time off this clock right here with the two-possession game. Actually, now I think about it, they're up 17. That's a three-possession yep. game, Patrick. You it know, sure does. They, yeah, they, they, they don't really have anything to worry about right now for them. Well, if they, uh, yeah, if they can keep the ball uh, out of the hands of the Eagles, then that's, that's a great defense. What's well, third and ten now, though, from their own 25. Penson, shotgun snap, looks to the right, going deep. He's got Douglas. It's going to be caught inbound. Oh, my wow. goodness, what a catch. It almost took it right out the back of the defender that time. And wow. I, and I will say, it did look like he bobbled the ball a little bit when he was going out of bounds, but the referee gave him the benefit of the doubt and signaled as a catch going on that out of bounds catch. And I mean, you know, if you're, you know, if you're Ken, if you're Ken John Pence in there, I mean, you put it right there on the basket, you know, yep. right for him on that outside catch. And, and Douglas with that big size, you know, he's a tall guy out there. Yep. He's able to just go right up and get it for Hightower. And that's a big game right there. 6'4", 6'4", 185 is Caleb Douglas on the score sheet here, the roster. But that pass was right where it had to be. And Douglas showed good concentration because the defender was pretty, pretty much in the spot he needed to be. Here's Johnson now. He's the left side, takes a quick pass, and he's going to scramble for close to a first down, for sure, nine yards, and he's ridden out of bounds, but he's going to be one yard short, but a big big first play on a quick pass to the left. 
from Penson to Caleb Johnson. Yeah, and that pass earlier to um, to number four, Caleb Douglas, that was a 40-yard completion there um, that we saw as he was tiptoed out of the bounds as he was able to retain possession of that ball. Well, that's a heartbreaker for the Eagles. They're just trying to hang in there now. Second one, Penson under center. Handoff, Payne up the middle, and he's plowing through and knocking some people down on his way for a first down to the 22. He ran with some power that time. Got the shoulder down, and somebody went flying off of that, that hit. Yeah, and Payne, like we said, been the MVP of the game so far. I mean, you just heard his stats in the first half, 11, 11 carries for 119 yards and two touchdowns. I mean, that man's a work workload. And I think I saw on Max Preps before the game, I think he's averaging close to nine yards per carry, believe it or not, on the season, Patrick. Well, well that sure, so, yeah, it looks yeah. like it, the way he's running tonight. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's keeping that average uh, right about where it, it is. And here's uh, first and 10 now for the Hurricanes, who lead by 17 in the clock running here with 8.45 to play in the third quarter. They're trying to put plenty of distance between them and the Eagles now. Penson, roll out right pass is incomplete. He had his receiver at about the 15 yard line and I believe if I'm reading it right it looks like uh, Sublet was the receiver. The fullback out of the backfield. Hey, yeah and I'm, I'm looking at Jeremy Payne's stats right here on Max Prep and so far in the game or so far this season 105 carries for 900 yards and only five touchdowns, but averaging 8.6 yards per carry on the ground so far this season for, for Hightower, Jeremy Payne. Yeah, he's showing his stuff tonight again. He's getting the job done. Here's a rollout to the right from Penson. Looking downfield, it's going to be intercepted. Off the receiver, wow. and it was batted up in the air or deflected up in the air and intercepted, and what a break as looks like uh, Diaz made the interception. Uh, Leonardo Diaz. Yeah, we're going to see the replay up on our big board over here. But, yeah, it, that was not that was not Penson's fault. I mean, that just hit right off the hands of the intended receiver. I think that's number 32 right there that he tried to get it to, yep. uh, Dylan Sublet. And, and it just fell right out the hands of Sublet, popped right in the air, and the, and the Eagles were able to bounce on it. Now at their 20-yard uh, line, and a uh, big break for them to get the ball back. Yeah, they got one of the turnovers back. Uh, two. Uh, give credit to the defensive player too he, he hit Sublet just as he was trying to catch it so made it difficult for him to bring that one home here's Herman fakes the pass now he's flush out of the pocket he's up the middle he's going to get about maybe two yards one or two he got a lot of pressure from the Hurricanes that time and he was unable to find a lot of daylight Yep. Second down and eight. Real interesting run there. You know, he got three yards on that run after taking some pretty big hits from the high towers in between. But I thought the lineup was was interesting to, to start out. They had four receivers actually to his right on that previous play. So now only three have no receivers on the left side. And let's see what Herman can do. Got Ross in the backfield behind him. Now he's to his right. Herman waits for the snap. He's got it. Run to the left with Ross, and he's not going to find a whole lot of room again. He has had a rough going tonight on the on the ground, has Hayden, or Devin Ross, I should say. It'll be third down and looks like five yards to go. Call it six, third and six. And a big play for the, for the Eagles. They have no scoring so far in the second half after a 32 to 15 scoring barrage in the first half. He slowed down here in the second half so far. Turnovers by both teams. Herman waits for the snap. Gets it now, looking left. He's swinging a man out of the backfield. He's got the 40, 45, 50, and it's a first down. That looks like the moose. moose. That's the moose. moose. Yep. Kalen David Moose, or Mosey is the, how they pronounced it for us earlier. And he, he just slid out of the backfield, little little wheel route out of the backfield. Nobody had him. And he was able to get up to the 50-yard line. We had a guy down there for the Eagles blocking as he was getting out of bounds. And I was wondering why that guy was blocking. He looked like he was behind uh, a block at the back. He almost cost his team some yardage there. Here's Herman rolling right now. Looking, looking. Now he's going to run. And he's going to be tackled at about the 46. He's able to pick up four yards. Didn't look like he had a whole lot of... A whole lot of yardage there, but he had four before he got tackled. 
Yeah, and he was looking for Moose there as he as he broke away from him and started going up the sideline. But Moose was pretty well covered, and Herman just decided to take it up to four yards himself, making it you know second second and six on the 46 yard line. And and yeah, what a play there for for Moose. 25 yard run on that outside. No one even saw him. It looked like on the high tower defensive end. Big play for him, and it's second down at six at the 46 of the Hurricanes. Fake handoff, Herman looking downfield. His receiver fell down. Now he's running, and he's trying to get past the 45, and he's at about the 44. Looked like his receiver, who he was trying to go to, had he uh, lost his footing out there on the right side. Yeah, maybe and stumbled a little bit, and it looked like a nice little pump fake from Herman, actually, to kind of throw the defense off there. So it might not have been a bad thing, but it seems like Herman, when he can't find anyone that he's looking for, he just goes and tucks it and runs. And unfortunately for him, Hightower knew it and puts him in a third and third and short again. Well, third and four is the opportunity here for the Eagles. Herman waits for the snap. He's got his man in motion coming from right to left. Hand off Petter. He's got the 40, 35, and a first down. He found a good good hole over there to the right side. Good blocking by the, by the Eagle line. And Andrew Petter, I believe you said he was the leading rusher in the first half for the Eagles. And he showed some good footwork there again. First down at the 34-yard line. Yeah, behind, behind Herman he was. He was 6 for 45. Herman, their quarterback, rushed 10 times in that first half. So Here's the snap. Petter's got it again. Looks like the same play. 30, 25. He's still going. 20, and he's he's uh, clipped up at about the 18-yard line. Another nice run for Petter. Looks like they're going to mark it all the, way the, all the way to the 16. Oh, First wow. and 10 for the Georgetown Eagles. Very generous spotting. The I thought it was too. There. Here's the snap. Too many men on the field. Are they going to call that or not? And another handoff to the right side. And is that Petter again or is that Ross? I think it was Ross. They're found, they found something on the right side the last couple of plays. Gain of nine. Up at the line again. Quick snap. Ross. He's got the edge. Five. Pylon. Touchdown. Eagles. Oh my goodness, they they found something on the right side and they kept going there. And that time he's able to get into the end zone. Big touchdown for the Georgetown Eagles. Cutting that lead from uh, 32 to 15 to 32 to 21. And here comes the extra point. Saucedo will be kicking it. That all happened very quickly and it, and it was all by the run game. I'll tell you about the drive after we see this. Uh, see this extra point. Tucker Griffin is the holder here. Saucedo. Here's the snap. Good snap. Kick is up and it is good. Yep. Yep. We, have new, we have a new score here. 32 to 22. Yeah and the drive started with Petter. You know he got a 10 yard run to start halfway through the drive. Then right after that got an 18 yard run Petter did. Then they went ahead and handed it off to their second back Devin Ross who Went for eight yards on the first round, eight yards to get the touchdown on the second drive. So great job for the Eagles to come back here. And we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back with you here at Legacy Stadium. With Internet Essentials from Comcast for only $9.95 a month, you get more. High-speed home internet service included. Peace of mind with XFi Advanced Security included. Access to millions of XFi Wi-Fi hotspots. That's included too. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings you affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. When you're connected, you're ready for anything. Visit internetessentials.com for more information. Taxes extra. Restrictions apply. Back here at Legacy Stadium, let's see if the... Eagles actually kicked one deep tonight. They haven't kicked one deep yet. They've had a couple of literal onside kicks up the middle types where the kicker tries to follow it, recover it. They're all tight again. Got two guys jogging off to each side of the field now. They're still bunched up in the middle of the field ready to kick it off. This one is going to be another onside kick. And it's going to be recovered by the high tower Hurricanes at about the 46. Kyle, they've done it three times tonight. I, I'm just amazed at the onside kicks. Yeah, and so is the broadcast next to us. You know, the the Georgetown broadcast is doing, you know, their broadcast right in our second window, and I went and asked them at halftime, you know, what what is this about with this kicker not kicking the ball at all and just letting onside kicks go? And 
they said they really don't know, you know, that they had an onside recovery at their last game, and ever since then they've kind of ran with it. The kicker has a scholarship, I'm, I'm being told, so maybe they want to keep him out for health reasons. Uh, right. That's the only thing I can assume here. But, yeah, you're giving Hightower great field goal position, or great field position every single time. And Penson waiting for the snap. Looks like he's going to go. It's not Penson. It was a direct snap. And he's still running inside the 40. I'm going to get you that number in a minute. Inside the 35-yard line, that is Caleb Davis took the snap, and he ran all the way inside the 35-yard line. So just like that, the field position that they had turns into even better field position at the 32-yard line. Direct snap to Davis that time, and he was able to get a good gain on it. A nice 17-yard run for Davis there as, as it looks like they're going to keep him out there in the quarterback. Now here comes... Here comes, uh, Penson. Here comes Penson. Yep, Penson back yep. on the field. But that was a great way to start out the drive. You know, yep. it's a quick little wildcat move right there. Just let 88 take off with the, your wide receiver. Yep. 17-yard gain on that run. They shook him up a little bit, gave him something else to look at, and it paid off for the Hurricanes. Here's Penson. With pain behind him now, a whistle, and was there a man in motion? Apparently, the false start here against the Hurricanes. It's 32 to 22, 4:35 to play here in the first. Excuse me, the third quarter. This Vipe live presentation of Fort Bend High Tower playoff football is brought to you by Xfinity, the future of awesome. Also being brought to you by First Tire and Automotive, with four great locations in Fort Bend County. And I'll get you the rest of that in just a minute. Here's a handoff up to Payne, and he's going to get about four yards up the middle. So we're being brought to you by First Tire and Automotive with four great locations in Fort Bend County for the best prices on tires and everything else your vehicle needs to run at its very best. Visit firsttireandauto.com. We're also being brought to you by Archer Volkswagen. On the Southwest Freeway, just inside the Sam Houston Tollway, they've been open since 1956 and they're ready to serve you. You'll feel like family when you're at Archer Volkswagen. Penson, snap, pass to the left, complete. And he's going to get about four yards. Ball loose. Who's got it? And the Eagles are jumping up and down over there on the sidelines, and I think they got the ball. I didn't even see the ball come out of there until I saw the sidelines erupt. Yeah, and there's a big turnover. I didn't see it either, Patrick. That is on the other side of our field. Luckily for us, though, they have a pretty good replay system going on over here at Legacy Stadium. And, I'm, you know, they're showing the celebration right now, the Eagles sideline, hulling up the defense for Hightower is coming out. But, yeah, what a what a very interesting play there. It looked like he had a very completed pass, and, you know, the Eagles just knocked the ball out of it. They're not going to show us the replay, but like it's it going to be an interception there. Uh, a recovery. Now. Jaden Adams, I believe, was the man who received the ball on the pass. Here's a handoff to Ross. He's running to the right side. 40, 45, 50. Oh my goodness. Here come the Eagles on a handoff to the right side. And it wasn't even the quarterback uh, Herman in there. He was a, a new quarterback in there on that one play. Not sure why that was if they were trying to throw off the Hurricanes a little. And any, at any rate, Ross was able to pick up a big game. Right side again. Finds a hole. and He's got about five yards. They keep running to the right. So they got something brewing on that side of the line of scrimmage. It's a 10-point game with three minutes to play here in the third quarter, and the Eagles offense has really gone quick here. Another, uh, well, let's see, were they going to call offside, I think? The Hightower high uh, high man jumped. It was uh, Kashawn Smith, which forced the Eagle tackle to, to move. And it's an offside against Hightower. Now there's going to be a timeout as they have, I think they have too many players on the field. One man ran on, ran on and nobody ran off. Three minutes to play here in the third quarter and the Georgetown Eagle fans are going crazy. It's 32-22. Short break. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. 
you are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you. Copy. Here at Legacy Stadium, and now there's going to be a false start on this play uh, uh, from the from the Eagles. And that's a guy we've called a couple of times, Tyler Hawkins. Uh, he's got a couple of penalties tonight. Not really, doesn't, not nothing he wants to put in his scrapbook so far tonight. <laughs> Here's uh, the second, or excuse me, the first and 15 play. Herman waiting for the snap with three, three receivers to his right. Pass to the right, it's just on the ground. He almost threw it like a, he almost spiked it. It was uh, at the feet of his receiver, uh, Petter. Unable to grab that one on a quick pass to the right. Just didn't look good from the start. Some scores that we have that might be of some interest here. Let's see if I can pull it up here. I had it just a moment ago. I'll have to get that to you in a second here. Here's a second down and 15. Peto on top of Maynard, 23 to nothing. Ross right side for the Eagles and he's gonna pick up about four yards. They're gonna be short of the first down by about 11 yards yet. Ridge point. Right next door to us is on top of side fair in the second quarter, 21 to nothing. Hand off to Ross, right side again on third and 11, and surprise on that call. It's uh, about a two yard gain, three yard gain. It'd be third down, excuse me, excuse me, fourth down and nine. Uh, hmm. Interesting play call. They yeah. like to keep the, goal, the, the ball on the ground, and they're running so quickly, Patrick, that I'm actually putting down the. Uh, the play-by-play -play sheet and I'm just gonna see and I'm just gonna tell you exactly what my eyes are, are telling me here because they've been moving the ball so fast I haven't been able to keep up with them you <laughs> know right. what I'm saying and it's right and Hightower they're, they're keeping Hightower off off track too because they've had some offside penalties they've even had some false starts of themselves so I think they're moving too fast for themselves even at some of these yeah, points. Yeah they're uh, it's fourth and nine now this little series has uh, kind of stalled here let's see if they can come up on a fourth down play here's Herman back to pass you got a receiver open it's caught it's going to be a first down for Georgetown. And that was number 14 on the reception that was during. Hayden Doring. He went up and got that ball. As, as we've been saying so far today with Herman, his passes have just been high. And that was another high pass. And Doring really had to go up and get that ball. Luckily, he had no one around him. And he was able to corral it for a first, first down. First 10 for Georgetown. Ross, right side, finding some room inside the 20, plowing his way down to the 15. And the ball came loose, but I think it was after the whistle more more scores Katie all over Stratford in the second quarter 21 nothing Tompkins in Jersey Village 14 7 Tompkins Manville and Pflugerville Weiss 21 20 Weiss on top some good scores there some tight ones and then a couple of lopsided ones and Ross is just going to take it for a two-yard gain right there. First it's going to be down. another first down for the Eagles as they're making their way in the red zone. And I got to say, that fourth down was such a big play for the Eagles yes, to be able was. to get that. I mean, they just had wide receivers all over the place. As there's an injured hurricane on the floor, we'll take it. We'll take a break. We'll be right back with you. Legacy Stadium, a minute and 11 seconds left in this third quarter. Hightower up 32, Georgetown 22. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. Here we are at Legacy Stadium. It's 32-22. Hightower leading with a minute and 11 to play here in the third quarter. And the Georgetown Eagles are threatening here at the 13-yard line. 
Off yeah. the field came uh, Kashawn Smith. He was shaken up for the Hurricanes. And he's able to walk off gingerly, but he's on his feet. That's a good thing. Here's the snap, and it hits the guy in motion. That was a, a, a play that did not work for the Eagles, and they're lucky to get on it as Herman was able to get on it. And there's a penalty marker on the play. Not sure what the penalty marker is going to be all about. And that's a late flag that came over from the Georgetown sideline. I think the coach said something to him, and he's getting with the officials right now. I think it's going to be against Hightower here, but he's going back to the coach, letting them know something. And uh, I think they're picking. Oh, the uh, the defense was uh, mimicking the signals according to the referee. That's interesting. I didn't even think that was a. I've yep. never seen that penalty before in my life. I have I have man. seen it. I have seen it uh, not very often, but That's I do. I see it once in a while. First and five now from the eight. They are in deep threatening position here. Handoff left side. It's going to be short of the touchdown, but some good yardage for uh, the Moose. Kalen, Kalen David Moose. He's down to the four-yard line. Hand off again. Moose has got it. Touchdown, Georgetown. Oh, my goodness. We got a game, It's folks. down to it could be a three-point game here with this extra point. It's 32-28 to 28 right now. It was 32-15. to 15. At halftime. Well, now, now I know why they call him Moose. Whenever they get in the red zone, they hand it off to his yeah. big boy, and he goes and takes it in there. Nobody wants to get in the way of the Moose either. <laughs> 27 seconds to play here in the in the half, and Saucedo ready for the extra point. Trying to cut it to three. Here's the snap. Pretty good one. Here's the kick, and it's up. And good with 27 seconds to play here in the quarter. 32 for Hightower. 29 for Georgetown. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. First Iron Automotive heard you were thinking of starting your holiday shopping earlier this year, so the season of giving starts now. $15 off oil changes, $100 off four tires, and save on just about any service. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. We're back here at Legacy Stadium. Saucedo has it teed up. And we've seen nothing but onside kicks or pop-up type kicks from the Georgetown Eagles tonight. Now they got three guys who could possibly kick it. It's going to be a kick, short kick, a little pop-up, receive at the 28-yard line, and he's going to run across the field but gain maybe one yard. I'm trying to find out who received that ball. Looks like Payne was the guy who got it, Jeremy Payne. Or was it Caleb Davis? Not sure which one of them had it there. But it, they'll start at the 30-yard line. This is not the type of field position they're used to. They've had the ball in excellent field position all night. This might be one of their deepest starting positions Wait, did, in did, the ball game. Did I miss it, Patrick? Did they actually kick it this time? Yeah, <laughs> they kicked it. They a, kicked it. Well, wow. they kicked it about uh, 25 yards. Here's Penson. Payne up the middle. He's not going to get much. He's got about two. And the momentum is clearly on the side of the blue and white right now. The clock is down to 10 seconds in the quarter. And I believe we're going to run out the clock for the third quarter here. We've played three quarters from Legacy Stadium. It's a white knuckler now. 32 for Hightower. 29 for Georgetown. We'll be back with the fourth quarter after this. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life. Like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. 
Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And for the first time ever, ask how to get 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. That's more speed and more value for the same price. Oh yeah, and for a limited time, ask how to get $300 back. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now, because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay, ends 11 21, 21. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra, and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Power with the ball, second down and eight. Hand off to Payne, and he's going to get to about the 35-yard line. Pretty good defense by the Eagles there. It'll be third down and five. A big play here as we start the fourth quarter. Eagles have scored 14 points here in the second half. Hightower have, has yet to put the points on the board here in the second half after scoring 32 in the first. However, 14 of those points came from basically from the defense. One three-yard drive that they had after the fumble and then the, the fumble recovery for a... A six yard, uh, a pick six, excuse me. A pass play to the right side is complete. A scoop. I was trying to say the scoop six on the recovery on that first half is how they scored part of their points there. So, what I'm trying to say is the defense was able to produce 14 points yeah, in the first half. Yeah, and unfortunately for Hightower, Patrick, to start out this, this, this second half, those first two drives, they had a couple interceptions now. Whether that was, you know, Penton's fault or not, we'll yet, we'll, we won't say because I think it was bounced off the hands of the receiver. But those are two interceptions that, you know, they had very good drives moving the ball, and then those happened. So well, they're moving again here, first and 10 at the 45. Payne, right side. He's got five, maybe six, seven. Still going for about eight. That's an eight yard run. Pretty good. Uh, ability to keep going there after the uh, contact was made by Payne there and he's had he continues his good game yeah, and if you're Hightower here you don't want to panic you know the the Eagles are trying to move the ball fast they're trying to get up to the up to the huddle early you know don't forget you have the three-point lead now y'all been able to move the ball down the field very easily so far in this game just had a couple of miss interceptions on those two drives and and the Eagles you know, they took advantage of it. Georgetown came to play today. They didn't come to, you know, shrivel up and, and give up after being down by three possessions, and they're right back into it. That's exactly right. And you're right about the Hurricanes. They just need to be patient here. Here's a quarterback sneak trying to get that first down. He's going to be short of the first down. Interesting play call. Quarterback yeah. sneak on a second and two. Uh, you don't see that very much, but, I mean, they trusted the offensive line there, and unfortunately for them, they kind of folded during that during that little play. The offensive line really didn't get any much movement up front, and that left uh, Penson really not be not not able enough room to run. And now it's going to be a nice little third and one. Like I said, Hightower's taking their time. We're getting down to the 10-minute mark over here at Katy, and it seems like they want to use the clock to their advantage. They're trying to do that. It's third and one. Like you said, it was kind of an inter interesting call on second and two to be a quarterback sneak. Here's Penson under center. Handoff. Payne. He's got the first down. He's to the 40. 35. Still going. 30. 20. To the 15. Pushed, but not out of bounds. He's in the end zone for a touchdown. What a run by Payne. Oh, my goodness. Backbreaker for the Eagles. And hallelujah for the Hurricanes. What a run by Payne. And I mean, what more do you have to say other than Payne? Yeah. I mean, this dude, this dude, Jeremy Payne, the sophomore, mind you, Patrick. This dude ain't no junior or senior. He's a sophomore here for the Hurricanes. He's been their best player. MVP, another almost 50-yard run for him, and that's three touchdowns now for Jeremy Payne. What a run! And a, a well, I don't. I'm not going to say it's a backbreaker yet, but it was. Uh, it was tough for the Eagles to swallow that one. He got the first down, and he kept on going, and. Somebody tried to push him out of bounds somewhere around the 15-yard line, and he's able to keep his feet in bounds and stroll into the end zone. Here's the kick from Ventura. It is no good. I think he hooked it to the left. So it's a nine-point game, 38-29. We'll take a short break with 9.39 to play here in the game from Legacy Stadium. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. 
or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. Back here at Legacy Stadium, it's uh, back to a nine-point game. Hurricanes, 38-29 to 29 over Georgetown. Here's the kick. Pickman has it at the five. He's at the 20, finding a crease, 35-yard line, just shy of the 35, 34. Good return by Dickman. Still plenty of time left in the game, especially the way the Georgetown Eagles run their offense. The Hightower Hurricanes picked up a big third down early in that drive, and then they picked up a third and one that turned into a, a long run for a touchdown, over 40 yards. Here's Herman now with his running back, Ross, to the right. Hand off, they're gonna try the left side this time. He's got a good crease to the 40 and out of bounds, around a 30 excuse me, around the 42 yard line. Didn't look like he put a lot of effort into that. He got about eight yards. Yeah, great run for Georgetown and, and they've been on the, they've been, that's what, that's where they've been able to make their, make their difference has been on the ground. And, and they have a great group of steady backs as they're gonna go hurry up again. Second down and two. 9.27 to play in the ball game. It's been a good one here from Legacy Stadium. Herman, quick pass to the left. Complete. He's going to get that first down, and he's out of bounds again. That looks like it's uh, Petter again. He's had a good game. Good game uh, running and caught a couple of passes. There's a first down. It's first and ten for the Eagles at their own 46. Hand off. It's the Moose. He's inside the 50. That's about a six-yard gain. Yeah, with Petter, the Moose, you got Devin Ross, and you got quarterback. Um, Darson Herman, all four of them have been able to create great yardage on the run for these Eagles. Second four. They look like they're going to snap it. Then they looked up to the sidelines for their for another play. Fake to the moose. Here's a quick pass. Petter's got it. First down. Down the sidelines. And there's going to be a penalty marker. I think it's going to come back. At least part of this is coming back. As Petter got it and it started strolling down the sidelines. I hate to say who that penalty might be on because he was in the area. I think it might have been an illegal block. Let's see what we got here. Holding. They said number 45. Did you hear what they said there? I turned up our crowd mic a little bit. Yeah, I think it was 45. Get to hear that. Tyler Seaman. Or maybe 25. Maybe he said 25. I don't see 45 out there. That must have been Dominguez with the hold. And it was a tough play for the Eagles because that was a big first down, and then he got a lot of extra yards up that sideline. But perhaps he wouldn't have gotten it if he had gotten the uh, illegal block. Second down. And We've seen that before with the Eagles. couple holding calls, couple false starts, putting them in tough positions after they've got a really good game. That's game right. Yardage. Second down and 14 now. And Herman is just going to take it. He's got the edge. He's going to get the uh, 47, 48 yard line. He's going to be short of the first down by a good, well, let's see where they mark it here. Could be nine yards to go. Didn't quite get as far as I thought he did. He's at the 47, third down in about nine. Here's the moose up the middle. And he's going to be short of the first down, but it was a good run. And he's short of the first down by about two. And they're up at that line of scrimmage again, ready to go. Fourth and two. Herman looking at the sidelines for the play on both sides, especially the Hurricane sideline here is making some noise. Trying to get a stop here. Hurricanes lead by nine. They yeah, can hear the defense chants and the, the crowd here. Yeah, they're bringing it in there. 
Herman now puts the moose to his right. Now he's adjusting again, and now it's going to be a timeout. They want to get it right. Well, it's timeout. 7.45 to play here. 38 to 29. Hurricanes on top. Let's take a short break. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome Internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable Internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And for the first time ever, ask how to get 12 times the speed for the same Internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. That's more speed and more value for the same price. Oh yeah, and for a limited time, ask how to get $300 back. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now, because you deserve awesome internet. All right, here it is, fourth down and two. Georgetown is just to call the timeout to get this play right. Loss is to the left of Herman. Man in motion, Dickman, fake handoff. He's going to pass it to the right. It's, it's Petter again, and he's got the completion, and he's got the first down inside the 40. Really like Andrew Petter. He does a lot of good things out there, running the ball, catching it. That was, yeah, pretty safe play there for Georgetown, and it's a good first down for them. Ross, left side. He's going to find only about two yards on that carry. Yeah, their and, uh, timeout came in handy for him there because that was a fourth and two. I mean, you don't convert that play. Hightower can really melt the yeah, clock and you're not in your favor. So pretty wow. much, uh, yeah, they could put the dagger in if they don't get it here. Well, but they still have the ball now, so they're putting pressure on the Hurricanes. Ross is behind Herman now. Three receivers to the left. And you got uh, Hawkins at the tight end position on the right side. Herman waits for the snap. He's got it. Looking left, still looking left, going deep, and it's going to be incomplete. Almost, almost intercepted yep. there from the uh, from the high tower safety, as he looks like he's a little slow to get up. But that was a great defensive play by high tower, way to get on those wide receivers and way to be in the right spot at the right time. It sure was. He was not open. He was trying to. Herman was almost trying to make it to where he would pass his receiver open or something because it was not really. He was well dis defended. Like Kyle said. And that is one of the few pass plays we have seen from this Georgetown offense. They A lot of what they've been doing has been come from the ground game or, or short little dink and dunk passes from Herman. Three receivers to the left. Herman, he's going to go left, and it's going to be underthrown to Dickman. He just really did not, he, like he pulled the string on that one. He just couldn't get it to him, and he was at his feet. Yeah, now you put yourself in a huge hole. Fourth and nine, sitting on... Looks like Hightower's 35, I believe they're on. They yeah. got they got to get all the way up to that 25 now, and, and that's not going to be easy for this Georgetown. They've been able to convert these fourth downs by getting fourth and shorts and converting an early down yardage play. This is going to be a tough play. Like you said, he's got uh, Petter to his left. Fake handoff. He's looking for Dickman. He stops on it, and he's got the ball. He spins off the defender, and he's going to go all the way toward the end zone, and it's going to be... I don't see an indication yet. I think he wants to stop with the one. I think he got him out of bounds just inside yep. the pylon sure. there. The pass was to Dickman, who looked like he was going to go deep, and then he stopped on a dime. And uh, big Herman miss, big got the – Yeah, Herman got it to him, and uh, the defender missed the tackle. And Dickman went all the way down to the one. Herman's got it. Dickman in motion. Hand it off to Dickman. He's not going to get it. He's short of the – the end zone and Number he's eight. actually going to lose some yardage on the play. The Cameron Barrett, the senior defensive back for the Hurricanes right there, just put a flounder on him and was not he was not letting him go anywhere on there. That's a great, great stop for this Hurricane defense right there. Second down and goal now that's wow. going to be from the three yard line instead of the one. What a tackle. It what sure a tackle. was a big play. Herman now takes the snap. Hands it off to Ross, and he's going to lose yards. The ball comes out. Hurricanes They're got it. it. Are they going to go all the way again? He's got the ball at the 40 uh. to the 50. It's going to be another pick, scoop, bubble recovery for six, and the Hurricanes have scored. Unbelievable. That is unbelievable. I just cannot believe what I just saw as uh, Baloney picked it up and went all the way in 
for the touchdown. The ball was fumbled around the five yard line. Yeah, Trey Oh Lom my goodness. <laughs> Trey Lombaloni, the 230 pound junior defensive end for the Hurricanes just took it 80 yards for a fumble recovery touchdown. That's their second of the game so far. This is something that, you know, Georgetown, it just happened to them earlier in the first half and they just had another huge blunder. And Hightower, what a play. Wow. Unbelievable. Here's the snap and the kick is up and good from Ventura. Unbelievable. They were about ready to score were the uh, Georgetown Eagles. And it turns into a touchdown for the Hurricanes. Yeah, and before we go to break, Patrick, I want to explain to the viewers here because they can't actually see what, what, what we're able to see with our eyes. When Baloney, this 230 defensive back, picked up that ball, he had six, maybe seven of his <laughs> yeah. other defensive teammates running with him. Yeah. They ran the entire way with him. It yeah. wasn't just Baloney. It was a full-on team effort. They weren't blocking either. They were behind Baloney, kind of supporting him in that journey of the touchdown. And that's got to be the play of the game. Oh, that's uh, it's amazing. I mean, that's the that's the that's the staple right there. It was just put it in the game. It was like go. the hurricane was uh, traveling the whole length of the field, the big wave all the way down to the end zone. And uh, the difference of the ball game clearly are the two fumble recoveries for touchdowns, the scoop sixes, unbelievable. And uh, what how things change? It was first and goal at the one. First and goal for Georgetown at the one. Surely they were going to score. Well, the first play was a loss of yards. The second play was a beautiful defensive play for another loss of yards, which caused a fumble. And as you said, Kyle, big uh, Trelon Baloney. Pick, picked it up, <laughs> and that is no Baloney. I mean, I'm telling you what, he took it, and he scampered all the way down there. Some By the time he scooped it up, some 80 yards. And I want to give, and I want to give a little bit of credit too to this student section and this High Tower fan base. They've come out and they have supported their team. You can hear them; they're loud and proud. And on every single play, when the Georgetown offense had that ball in the red zone, the fans were there. They were there for supporting them. And uh, shout out to my mom; she's a big A&M fan. The twelfth man. Really yeah, came in there you go. Right Here's there. the kick from Ventura. Dickman's going to get it again at the ten. Finds some room on the left side to the 30 still going and he's just short of the 40 and there's going to be a late hit out of bounds which was very unnecessary and it wasn't much of a hit but it was enough to draw the flag and so the Georgetown Eagles are going to get a little bit more out of this I will say with Hightower up 45 to 29 with only five minutes and 45 seconds left it'll be really interesting if Georgetown can come down and get two touchdowns, and you remember that extra point that they missed, I wonder if that plays a factor here because that changes it from a two-possession game all the way to a three-possession game it would be if they were up by 17 yeah. rather than 16 points. And with the way and with the way that this Georgetown offense has been able to move the ball offensively with their quick pace and their quick runs on the ground, I wouldn't be surprised if they get a quick up and down touchdown right well, here. Well, yeah, you, you know? can't you can't count them out yet. Uh, that's for sure. Yeah. This has been such an interesting game. Absolutely. Um, Hightower has taken advantage of the turnovers big time. Oh yeah, momentum's definitely on Hightower's side. Right here we go now. It's going to be a reverse type play. It's going to be a reverse pass, but he's going to be. Guarded very well as Dominguez got the pitch, rolled to his right. Looked like he was going to make a pass, but the de defensive uh, back of the Hightower Hurricanes yeah, I blanketed shout, the receivers. I want to shout him out real quick, Patrick, because he was the play of that game. Number 36, Jaden Scott, the senior defensive back for the Hurricanes, was able to guard that pass play from that reverse little pitch that they had going on, and he was the key to that play. If that pass was open and he wasn't there, that could have been a that could have been a walking touchdown in there for Georgetown. Second down at 16 for the Eagles. Herman rolling to his left, passes, and it's complete to Dominguez. He made a nice catch. He had to go down for it to the ground, and he picked up about 10 yards. And yep. it'll be third down now, and about seven yards to go. A manageable situation for Georgetown now, but the clock is. Big time against the Eagles here. Got four minutes and 40 sec seconds left in the fourth quarter. Hurricanes trying to hang on here as they got a nice lead right now. Quick pass to the left. Petter has it. He's still rolling down the sidelines. Got a first down inside the 45-yard line of the Hurricanes. 
Petter, uh, he's got some uh, strong legs there as he keeps it going, keeps the pile moving. It might have been better to get out of bounds on that situation, though. I'm not sure. 4-15 to play here in a ball game. Herman looking to his left. Got a man open. Dominguez across the middle. And he's, oh, he fumbled oh, wow. again. And the Hurricanes, I believe, are going to get on it again. Oh, my goodness. The Eagles are going to think back on this game, and they're going to be thinking about the turnovers that they made. Boy, oh, boy, every one of them has cost them dearly tonight, and that might have been the last one, the one that broke the Camels' back. Yeah, and that kind of, you kind of summed it up right there, Patrick. Those turnovers, man. Not only the turnovers, but the fumbles all the way from the very beginning of the game whenever they got the kickoff and he was not able to corral it after Hightower went all the way and took it to a touchdown. That was the first play of the game they ever touched the ball on offense. And ever since then, they, they just got butterfingers today is what it seems like, Georgetown. And I don't know, maybe it's the travel time that it takes to get out there, but it just doesn't seem like they have a very good handle on this football. Sometimes the it just doesn't work out for you. You're just, you just no matter what you do, here's a handoff to Payne. He's the 25. He's still going. Left sideline to the 50, and he's finally ridden out of bounds at about the 46-yard line, 47-yard line. Another big run for Payne. And that's someone that you want to wow. keep an eye on if you're a Hightower fan in the future. I mean, this kid is a sophomore, and he's already got 200-plus yards on this game with under 15 carries, I believe. I'm doing this off the top of my head, but... What I'm saying is he's a great, great athlete for you to have. And with him having two more years at your school, that's someone that you can, you know, hand off the ball most games to and just let him take over. You don't even have to throw it, really. He really hits that hole hard. And then once he gets through the crease, he puts the afterburners on. I will say they, they did mention to me over the Georgetown broadcast it could be a cold weather issue out here also in, in the Texas area. Maybe maybe the weather is playing a factor in, in the way that these guys are hanging on to the ball. Wow, you think you really think you really think that has something to do with it? That's amazing. Here's a handoff to a new runner. Well I will say this, Patrick, it has been a little bit warmer so far in Houston to go far this season and just recently out here in the city of Houston cold front has been picking up it is a little bit colder out there and that definitely gives you a different feel on the ball when you're catching it when you're throwing it yep. all sorts of things you know right. heat, and, heat and coldness is, is it could be you know I'm, and i'm not giving i don't want to give them an excuse you know obviously they, they fumbled it you know more than but it but it, it is maybe uh it's, a observation that i've noticed it's, it's something certainly that the georgetown people told me as well it certainly could be part of it um one thing to say about that too is it's the same for both teams but um, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I mean, it could be. It's, it's, it is chilly out there, but it's, uh, they should be able to handle this. Here's Douglas, left side, 40, 35, and he's knocked out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. That is uh, Caleb Douglas on a quick pass to the left, and he's hard to bring down. He's hard to stop once he has it, and the Hurricanes... Yeah, I just looked at uh, my sheet right here real quick because I just he seems so tall to me. Believe it or not, Caleb Douglas, he's 6'4 down there. Yeah. Uh, he's the tallest guy I see on the roster here. You can tell um, on the field. Yeah, he's a he's a tall receiver and he runs well with it when he has it. Excuse me, there's an offensive lineman, Curtis Carson, number 51. He's 6'6. Six, six. <laughs> yeah, there's another guy that's 6'5, I see. They're, uh, uh -huh. Anyway, not too many taller than him. Here's a handoff. Up the middle he goes. It's number 13. It's uh, haven't said his name before. Dun Duncombe. Duncombe. Missick. Missick Duncombe is where we're going to go. And he with. has a first down to the 16-yard line. And Hightower is in no hurry at all with a 16-point lead. The ball at the Georgetown 16. That last turnover, I think, was the backbreaker for the Georgetown Eagles. Absolutely. I mean, you're close to being in, in the red zone of, of Hightower and, and to just go ahead and, you know, fumble the ball like that, which which is not new to them. This is about their fourth fumble, I believe, so far in this game. And yeah, uh, they've it, had it a hard, really hurt them. They've had a hard time. Penson waiting for the snap. And he fumbles the snap. And he's going to be tackled at about the 24-yard line, a loss of looks like eight yards. He fumbled the snap. It was a little bit low. But I'm sure that he would say he should have had it. But it was a little down there toward the shin area. Interesting that uh, Georgetown.
Georgetown isn't going to take a timeout here with only two minutes left in the game and down 16 points. I think they've kind of, you know, threw in the towel. They do have two timeouts on their board that I'm seeing, but yeah, I, not one to use it here. It's, uh, it is interesting. I wonder if they stop them on this play, they maybe would use one. I'm not sure, but, I mean, obviously they'd have to score twice. Could get, get a score and get an onside kick. Here's the uh, snap. Penson hands it off. Left side, and it's going to be a gain of maybe three. Now they call the timeout. Yeah. That is uh, Ducumbe again. Third down and looks like 16 yards to go. This is a broadcast is also being brought to you by the Needville Insurance Agency. You'll get the very best rate on your car and home insurance when you put the Needville Insurance Agency to work for you. Bradley Stavanaugh and his team shop dozens of carriers so you pay the lowest premium possible. Call them at 979-793-7411 or go to needvilleinsurance.com. And don't forget, don't miss the U UIL Football State Championship starting Wednesday, December 15th at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Ticket information and more can be found at UILTexas.org. And I got to say, because I, I interned over at the Cowboys and I have been out there um, in Jerry World for some of these high school championships, y'all really should, you know, take a trip out there and go see that new stadium and go see Jerry World. Well, it's we, great to see, we great competition, um, and it's going to be a it's gonna be a fun weekend. A couple of years ago, we were able to go up there and see Marshall play in the championship game. They got beat in a pretty close game. Here's the pass. Penson's got it Ooh. to his man, Johnson, who would have had a touchdown had he caught it. Bounced right off his chest plate. There. Now there's a penalty <laughs> marker coming in late here. Could have it been a uh, personal foul here against Georgetown. That flag came in after the play. Oh, boy. That adds insult to the wound. They were going to stop him on third down there force a field goal attempt or something there but now it's for naught now the Hurricanes can just run the clock out if they want there is one timeout left for the Eagles but uh, even with that one timeout the Hurricanes could conceivably kneel three times here or twice depending on if they call the timeout or not can't say enough about this high tower offense today even I mean scoring 45 points on on and they still had two or three interceptions. I mean, they easily could have put up 60 here if here. they wanted to. Now their know. referees are going to have a little discussion here. Looking good for the Hurricanes here with a minute and 16 to play. They're up by 16 points, 45 to 29. They've been the beneficiary of turnovers and a couple of touchdowns off of fumble recoveries. Okay, I'm not sure what he just said. It occurred after the play, so I guess they marched the, the ball. I don't understand that. I don't think they're going to give him the first down. No, now, because it was only third down. I, st I still think they could, I still think Hightower. It should be their ball because uh, it was only third down. Oh yeah, no, it definitely shouldn't. If it was fourth down, I could see that being a possibility, but it was third down. Yeah. Yeah, no, so you're right. they should they should at least have an opportunity to kick a field goal if they like. To, well, they should know. actually they should have a first down. I think it'd be an automatic first down, wouldn't it? I mean, yeah. Or they said it was after the play, so yeah, I don't know. I guess I don't know the rules well enough, but I thought one of those types of plays with automatic first down. Here is the referee. Yeah. They, they fixed yep. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right, Patrick. They they. <laughs> You know, you got you got more of an eye on the game than I think some of the officials do, and they <laughs> thought know. it was fourth down, yeah. and they were giving it to, to Georgetown. Yeah, I'm not sure how they <laughs> they just overlooked it, I guess, and but they corrected it, and that's that's good, you know. So now Hightower has the ball, and the clock is running as we approach the minute mark. Who's the guy with the ball? It's number 13. It's uh, Duncumby again, Duncumby, and he's going to gain about three yards. The, cl the clock is down under a minute now. And Georgetown is not going to call a timeout. If I was Hightower, I would just put a knee on it. Out of respect, yeah. I yeah. Think you, should. you got the game under control here. They're going to move on to the next round. And I know that we should. Let's see. 
the winner of this game, I saw somebody wrote that down. The winner of this game will play, if I can find this, here's a handoff to the right side. It's going to be stopped at about the four yard line. Let's see if I can find this. Trying to find out who the Hurricanes might play here. Well, the winner of this game, I know, will be in the sweet, it quote, sweet 16 round of the playoff bracket. Um, it looks like. I had it written down. And I'm sorry, sports fans, Hightower fans. I don't have that information, but I do have this information. Hightower is going to win the game, 45 to 29. Congratulations to the Hurricanes with a big win here from Legacy Stadium. And we're, we're still trying to find out who they might play, but uh, that's really not as important as the fact that they won the game. Great game from the Hurricanes. Great offense, taking advantage of some big plays on defense. And they come out of here with a big win. Yeah, I think it was a great game all around, and, and give it up for these Georgetown Eagles, man, traveling out here from 30 minutes north of Austin to come out in our in our little backyard of an area out here in Katy Legacy Stadium. They played they played a great game, and like you said, Patrick, it was, unfortunately for them, turnovers played a big part in that, and the Hightower defense, uh, they picked up those turnovers and ran it all the way for touchdowns. Two of them came off fumble recoveries, and, and that was really it for the game. As Hightower wins, 45, Georgetown, 29. Yes, and we'll uh, we'll end it with that. A uh, great game for, for the Hightower Hurricanes. Um, they're, they're in a sweet 16. We're going to find out who they're going to play, I'm sure, soon, soon, soon. I'm sure the coaches will have the, the film queued up and ready to scout their next opponent. But congratulations to the Hurricanes. And, Kyle, it's been wonderful working for you, with you. you. You did a lot of work. Kyle's doing all the work over here. All I'm doing is talking. <laughs> He's doing all the, the work with the buttons and the controls. And thank you for making it so easy and, uh, and enjoyable for me. I appreciate it, Patrick. You know, that's what I'm trying to do. I, I'd, l I'd love to call more games in Fort Bend. As, as you know, I am an alumni of Ridgepoint. Hightower was one of our biggest rivals when I was over there. And I'm just nothing but happy for them, you know, that they're able to to enjoy this moment, enjoy this playoff win. And, and they've been a big playoff powerhouse now for these past couple of years. And, and, you know, they have a lot of young talent and a lot of things to look forward to in the future. And most, most importantly, these upcoming weeks as they continue their march in the playoff hopes. Well, so. we will... I'm sure we're going to do our very best to be broadcasting the next game for the High Tower Hurricanes. Stay tuned and keep your eyes and ears open for when that'll be. But here at VipeFortBend.com, we will definitely be geared up for the next round for the Hurricanes. Congratulations to the Hurricanes. Big win, 45-29 over the Georgetown Eagles. And with that, we'll sign off. Congratulations, Hurricanes. We'll see you soon. God bless you all. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And for the first time ever, ask how to get 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. That's more speed and more value for the same price. Oh yeah, and for a limited time, ask how to get $300 back. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now, because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay, ends 11 21, 21. Restrictions apply. New connect internet, 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes and fees extra, and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. First Star and Automotive heard you were thinking of starting your holiday shopping earlier this year, so the season of giving starts now. $15 off oil changes, $100 off four tires, and save on just about any service. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. First Star and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com.
With internet essentials from Comcast for only $9.95 a month, you get more. High-speed home internet service included. Peace of mind with XFi Advanced Security included. Access to millions of XFi Wi-Fi hotspots. That's included too. Internet essentials from Comcast brings you affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. When you're connected, you're ready for anything. Visit internetessentials.com for more information. Taxes extra. Restrictions apply.